I captain on the mound will be looking at this lineup for the Atlanta Braves. Kelby Overis will be leading it off at second base. Andrew Jones in center field. Brian Jordan in right. Andres Galarraga in the cleanup spot. Javi Lopez the catcher. Former Met Bobby Bonilla at third base tonight. Hubbard's got left for Kyle's back at shortstop and Millwood is on the mound in batting ninth. And take a look at the Tri-State Four defense behind Mike Hampton tonight in the outfield. Benny Agbayani, Jay Payton in center, and Derek Bell in right. Around the infield, Robin Ventura, Melvin Moore at shortstop, Edgardo Alfonso at second, Todd Zeal at first, and Mike Piazza behind home plate. And on the mound, Mike Hampton looking for his eighth win. He has a four and six record against the Atlanta Braves in his major league career. Overall, he's 177 and lost 48. And last year, a superb year, 22 wins, four losses with the Houston Astros. And red hot of late for the Mets, who look to get back to a two game deficit tonight behind the Atlanta Braves. If they can pick up a victory here in the second game of this. Four game set. We'll have another near sellout crowd, if not a sellout, on hand tonight at Shea as folks are seated all the way up in the upper deck to the very back row with a lot of fans still coming to the ballpark. Happy Fourth of July weekend and keep it a safe one, won't you? Those folks did take the seven train. No, he didn't. Umpire and crew tonight Gary Cedars from will have the plate. Bruce Fremming, the crew chief at first, Dale Scott and Marvin Hudson, the umpire and crew for tonight's game. We are ready to go. Hampton and the delivery is a strike on the inside corner kill the Averis. Averis had a one for four in the ball game last night brings speed and a legitimate leadoff batter to Atlanta this year. And he's got a base hit into right field. Kelvin Averis is on with a single. He's hitting almost 500 against Mike Hampton now in his career. So a leadoff single for Averis and that creates problems immediately. He was thrown out last night by Mike Piazza. But he has led the National League in stolen bases had 56 his first year in ball in 1995 with Florida at one time a Mets farmhand. He was traded by the Mets for Carl Everett. And he can fly. Zeal at first moving off the bag will come back on the throw. So Hampton is going to be concerned with Andrew Jones in the number two hole in this lineup. Another guy is well over that 300 mark seven game hit streak. See how he's looking playing touch with him. It's like basketball playing off the center. And at the center field an Adam ball though and Peyton's got it and Jones is retired one away. So Peyton just a couple of steps towards right left field on that one to his right and uh, ball stayed up shoulder high. One of the keys to beating the Atlanta Braves is keeping the top of that lineup off keeping Veras off of base when you've got a lineup that follows in the two three four five area but very much like the New York Mets very potent in the middle of that lineup even with Chipper Jones out of the lineup tonight. One down and a hard base hit into left field. Got a round on that one, and Brian Jordan's on. He's a 350 hitter off Hampton. And the Atlanta Braves kick it off with two singles, first and second now with one away off Hampton. Well, you've heard me talk so many times about getting ahead of the hitter and throwing first pitch strikes. Mike Hampton got the first pitch strike to Veras, and then he got a base hit. Jones, first pitch line drive to center field, and now Brian Jordan, first pitch, base hit to left field. Sometimes you say, okay, now we got to take just a slightly different tack and maybe not throw that first pitch strike. Mike Campton, two right handers, makes his living down and away on that outside corner. Good movement on his fastball, moving down and moving away. Now, Andres Galarraga is a hitter that has tremendous power to right and right center field. He showed that last night. And the runners are going to go. Heads up, base running on the ball that Piazza could not come up with cleanly. Puts Varis and Jordan in scoring position and takes away that ground ball double play. 
That may have been exactly what was in Mike Hampton's uh, head at that moment was that listen, I've thrown two pitches and getting up two line drives. I'm going to make sure that I'm going to get this ball down and not give Galarraga something good to hit. He got it too far down, and Mike Piazza trouble coming up with it. Tough pitch. Probably well, should be scored a wild pitch. They've scored it a pass ball, but I think you're right, Tom. Yeah. I think that bounced. And Galarraga got hit. Hampton got Galarraga on the elbow. I don't think Galarraga really wants to go. Pitch inside is going to load the bases here with Lopez coming up. Galarraga really didn't have to move very much on that, Ralph, and still got hit by it. He's uh, looking like uh, he didn't like the fact he was hit by the pitch, but it was not that far inside. And he has a habit of diving into the ball, gets hit a lot. And right there, he just barely moves back to try and get out of the way. There's certainly no intent to hit Galarraga on purpose. And now a tough job with the bases loaded. And the catcher, Javi Lopez, the batter. I do was look at his eyes, and he was looking right at my captain. Why? I don't understand it either. I mean, is he, he saying because I hit a home run last night? Yeah, well. Well, Javi Lopez is up, and the bases are loaded. Chance for the double play though and a strike taken. There were the old days, Gary, and a pitch that hit Galarraga like that. If he got hit by a pitch, pitchers are yelling at you, get out of the way. Oh, yeah. There's get no out of the way. There's no that. question you should get hit. Should not be able to get hit by that pitch. Another get case, out of the way. Would he have stood in there if he didn't have the padding? Maybe moment? not. Avi Lopez, 0 1. Lopez has been in a funk, three for his last 30. It's a big at bat. Now, Chipper Jones is not here tonight. His wife having a baby. He's gone back home. And is missing tonight's game. Birth is eminent. Lopez, look at the numbers. We're doing the numbers here on the starting lineup against Mike Hampton. I mean, these guys have crushed Hampton in their careers, the starters in this lineup for the Atlanta Braves. 0 2 Campania waiting on deck. Bases full outside. And a one ball, two strike count. Varis kicked this inning off with a single. He's now all the way over to third base. With a one out, Jordan a single. He's at second, and the hit batter Galarraga at first. And now Hampton trying to work his way out of this. He's still only one away. Lopez takes that one down low. And the count goes to two and two. There you see the numbers with the bases loaded. He's had three grand slams. The starting lineup, if you take Millwood out of it and figure their whole combined average against Hampton, 366 batting average for the Atlanta lineup against Mike Hampton. 2 2 delivery. Way up high, and the count is full. Three balls and two strikes. Tom, that's the one he wanted to get him on. That was a big pitch right there, Tom. He wanted to get, you don't want to go to three and two. Yeah, I don't believe that you're going to start the runners in this situation. You'd like to stay out of the double play, but the runner on third base, maybe you do. I would say no. Would the say only no. manager I've ever seen do that is John Zimmer. 3 2, bases loaded, and he walked in a run. Lopez will be credited with the RBI as Kelby Overis crosses the plate. The Braves have the 1 0 lead, and Dave Wallace is on his way to the mound. And listen to the reaction from Bonilla. Thought Rocker wasn't like here at Shea. <laughs> well, it's been an ongoing love affair for a long, for a long, long time for Bobby Bo and the local fans. This goes back years, so. He yeah. has lost uh, Tom about 40 pounds yeah. at least. He looks terrific. And ironically, this is the last year of his contract that is being paid for by the New York Mets. Most of the contract is being paid by the Mets. How's that for a big pain, huh? Ooh, does that hurt if he gets a hit? One strike, one out, rather, and a first pitch foul ball. Would you say there's a little something when you're paying somebody and they're playing against you? Oh, man. How about that? But he has had quite a comeback here this season. 290 with runners in scoring position. You see, 99 with the Mets. He had that 151 average. He's hitting 279 this year. Switch hitter, 400 right, 252 left. Hampton with the bases loaded, still one away. Bonilla, oh, oh my gosh. 
Brian Jordan, the third base runner. How in the world that ball missing? <laughs> oh, How when, is <laughs> when you lead off at third base, you lead off in foul territory so that if you are hit by the ball, you're not out. If you were in fair territory, he would be out. Base is loaded first inning, only one away. Two strike count on Bobby Bonilla. Mike Hampton. A slapper could be two. Robin Ventura. There's one. Alfonso. Double play. Take a look at the Delta starting lineup for Bobby Valentine's New York Mets. Melmora leads it off. Bell, Alfonso, and Piazza. Robin Ventura third. Todd Zeal, Peyton Agbayani, and Hampton hitting ninth to Delta lineup for the Mets. And take a look at the Tri State Fort defense for the Braves here tonight. Yeah. A lovely evening at Shea Stadium. Trinidad Hubbard in left field, Andrew Jones in center, Brian Jordan in right, Bobby Benilla just bouncing in that double play. He will play third base. Rafael for Cal at short, Varis at second, Andres Galarraga at first, and Javi Lopez behind the plate. And Kevin Melwood making his 18th start here tonight. He's ready to go, and Mel Morris stands in thinking about bunting, takes it outside for a ball. Of course, you have Bobby Manea playing third base in place of Chipper Jones. Manea not known for being a great fielder and not really a bad glove man, but he does not throw well. Melwood misses away and a 2 0 count. Melmore 0 for 5 in the ball game last night. 6 4 win for the Atlanta Braves. First meeting of the year for these two teams right down the middle Kevin Millwood this 25 year old couple of great seasons for Millwood he is two and all lifetime against the Mets two one delivery to Mora. strike on the outside corner two and two Mora will back out thought that one was outside a bit. Outfield swung around to right on it. Infield straight away. 2 2 delivery. Breaking ball down the line. Curving foul. Millwood is yet another in the line of quality pitches the Atlanta Braves always seem to find. They think this guy can be a Cy Young Award winner some year. Well, he had Cy Young Award numbers last year. He had a terrific year. I'll get into that a little bit later. In the Relationship of innings pitch and hits and walks, Gary, because it's very interesting. Interesting, something you don't see all the time. Hello, three and two. Well, that's interesting right there. Of course, Mara has been batting well, and of course, Galleria, Galarraga was a hit by a pitch. It could be retaliation. I don't know, but uh, the count was it's, two a two. Yeah. it's a little late. It's a little late in the count, going to three and two. I doubt if that's. Retaliation. He may have been trying to go up and in. And walking. And Moore took a second look at him after the pitch went by. Lead off man on for the Mets in the first. Number 16. Derek Leo Mazzoni, the pitching coach of the Atlanta Braves. Any pitching coach will have his head down when the leadoff man of any inning walks. Either saying a prayer or cursing, one of the two. Yeah, a little of each. Bobby Cox with the signs for Javi Lopez, the catcher. Derek Bell with a 10 game hit streak going. One of the many Mets. He's had a fine month of June. Bell has gone 4 12 for an average during this 10 game hit streak. He has also scored at least one run in the last nine games. Consecutive games. Ties a mark set by Mackie Sasser, Bernard Gilkey, and John Olaru, the Mets record. Bell takes the fastball on the inside corner. 
You're talking about Kevin Millwood. He's won 34 games, 30, excuse me, 35 games in the last couple of years. And last year, an earned run average under three, actually 2.68. A great innings pitch and walk ratio. He was at his hit, hits and walks were underneath his innings pitch, which you do not see very often. I've talked about it before. Probably the best I have ever seen. It's either Sandy Koufax or Bob Gibson. Millwood up high on that one. Last year he pitched 227 innings. He gave up 168 hits and 59 walks. And he pitched 228 innings, excuse me, and those two numbers add up to 227. I put it in perspective, Greg Maddox last year pitched 219 innings, gave up 258 uh, base on, on balls. And walked 37, so he was plus 74. Maddox, 58 hits. He gets uh, a lot of hits. Yeah. yeah. But amazingly, you know, Millwood last year was underneath. When you add hits and walks underneath innings pitch, you don't see it very often, and his numbers indicated it. They have not been that way so far this year. Mora with the lead at first. Bell takes it up high. Two ball, one strike count. I talked to Leo Mazzoni. You're talking about him, Gary, the pitching coach for the Atlanta Braves. I said, what's the difference? Why different numbers this year than last year? I mean, this guy potentially had Cy Young Award numbers last year. He said, well, he's trying to do more than he should be doing and trying to improve on last year. And it probably started when John Smoltz got hurt for the Atlanta Braves and went on the DL for the entire season. Mora goes. Filed off by Bell to and do. So he felt maybe he had to do more than he was doing last year. Another thing that you can fall in, there's Leo Mazzoni, the pitching coach for the Braves. Another thing you can do when you're a power pitcher the way Millwood is, and he's got a great curveball. You sit there and watch Greg Maddox and Tom Glavin pitch and say you got a pitch like those two guys. You better not. Don't be look, don't be looking at them. Look at them for something that you can do later, 10 years from now. You, this guy is a true power pitcher. And Mazzoni is trying to get him to Remember how he pitched last year. Great fastball and an outstanding curveball. Bell ready with a 2 2 at the plate and towards second base. Bercal, they got him. Ferris, Bercal to Galarraga. And Bell hits into a double play and that'll take care of the base second runners. Base. Two down. Eighth time Derek Bell is grounded into a double play this year. Fastball on the inner half and Derek Bell was late on it. Boy, that, that's like infield practice right there. The 66 double play that the Braves have turned on the infield. Raquel back in the lineup. That shortstop for the Atlanta Braves. Out with a hamstring pull. He and Varis. Pretty good combination out there at short and second. Up the middle strong with Andrew Jones in center. A great pitching staff they've got. You look up the middle with the Atlanta Braves and you see winners. Two down. Edgardo Alfonso. Raquel, the youngest player in the major leagues, 19 years old and 10 months. And he has a chance to be the rookie of the year. Real good chance. Breaking ball missed away. We were talking the other day about who's going to win the gold glove at short in the National League this year because with Ray Ardonia's out, he's not going to get it, obviously. This young man, depending on how he plays the second half overall, he's got a shot. The other rookie of the year candidate, one of them, is the New York Mets' Jay Payton. He's up there, and he and for Cal in the offensive numbers, Payton is for the most part second in offensive categories, and for Cal is first. Both are rookies. There you see his numbers defensively 13 errors this season in the 55 games that he's played. And that is really too many. Edgar Renteria and Barry Larkin seem to. I talked to a couple of players. You asked who's going to win the Gold Glove this year. They're the two names in the National League. This is somewhat ironic. In the American League, shortstops are so deep you can't get enough of them on the All Star team. We were talking about this before the game. In the National League, it's the second basemen who are so deep you can't get enough of them on the All Star team. Alfonso is having one of the great years, and he might not make the team. The only way he's going to make it. If Bobby Cox, the manager of the Braves, picks it. As Jeff Kent has got to go with the numbers he's putting up. I mean, he's having a spectacular he's got start. 70 RBIs. Oh. One, two breaking ball. There's that curve in the dirt. And a two ball, two strike count. 
Millwood with the help of the double play now. Two down, nobody on. Off Millwood. Not very good numbers. For Edgardo Alfonso. Two balls, two strikes, two away. And up high with that, the three ball, two strike count. That's that high fastball that he gets, and he can ride it every once in a while. He can get some elevation on it. And he tries to get the hitters to swing at that pitch. And Garda, pretty disciplined hitter. He will chase the breaking ball every once in a while at Garda will. So he doesn't swing very often at that high fastball. And that one, right field, not deep. Jordan, a late break. And had some trouble with that one, but puts it away. 19 pitches had to be thrown in that inning, and nine of them were out of the strike zone. Tom talking about a difference for Millwood. That totals one of them. How serious were the Mets about quieting down the crowd because of Rocker? We've got Sunday afternoon music on Friday night. They're a lot more serious than your professional singing career. <laughs> well, I don't have a professional singing career. Now you know why. Mike Hampton. He also is not, up. Don't have an amateur singing <laughs> career. Either. No, I don't have. Uh, I don't have either one of those. You're absolutely right. And what is Trinidad Hubbard doing in this lineup? He was not supposed to start tonight. And a towering fly ball to right field. Bell. And he's got it. So Trinidad, I am in the ball game. Hubbard flies out to right field. And there's one away here in the second inning. You know, talking about Frank Sinatra, he was a fan of the Dodgers and went to many ball games and a close friend of uh, Tommy Lasorda, who was manager at that time, and when Rick Sutcliffe was told he's not going to be on the playoff roster, he rearranged the furniture in Lasorda's office. <laughs> and the one thing Lasorda was worried about, did he break Sinatra's autograph picture? <laughs> mm. Raphael for Kyle, the rookie we were talking about. If Tommy would have valued that. Oh, oh. They, that would have been disastrous. 1 0 count. We were talking about that before the game tonight in the uh, some of the Atlanta coaches actually. Bobby Cox was saying about what a deal for Lasorda to coach that Olympic team. What a great chance for him. Bobby said man it's going to keep he's going to give him 10 more years in his life <laughs> that he's got an opportunity now to be back in and managing and all the publicity and the Olympics and everything else and the stories. Oh, he might get some new stories. Yeah, that. that's yeah. right. That might, that might help. <laughs> might not. <laughs> that's the bad part. It might not. You're right. That's the bad part. Uh, Raphael for Cal takes it, and Hampton has given up a leadoff walk, uh, one out walk rather. And one of the things that has troubled Mike Hampton when he has not pitched well has been the base on balls. He has a history of giving up a lot of walks, and he gave up a lot of walks early in the season. And once he settled down and relaxed, his walk to innings pitch ratio ratio went way down. But that's a real no-no right there, walking that number eight hitter. A lot of those old coaches would tell you, this and that number eight hitter is there for a reason." Yeah, for Cal is hitting 3-11, but he's hitting eighth for a reason. Because he's an out man and you, you know, one of the best pieces of advice I ever got said never ever let a number eight hitter get a base hit or walk off of you. One of the best spotters on the Braves right here fouls it off. Millwood has nine sacrifices this year. He leads all Braves and generally it is a pitcher. Terry Mulholland's got eight. Millwood trying to move the man up with one away and the Mets. Bobby Valentine has sent out the defensive signals here, and Zeal and Ventura both came over to talk to Hampton. First, Jim Leland was the manager of the Pirates, and he had Jay Bill, who batted second for the Pirates. And he led the league every year in sacrifice hits with something like 35, 30, 32. And Zeal moving in, then moving back to the bag. There was on. a while where Bell bunted like every time he came to every plate. time. Yeah. And then he moved on to Arizona and started hitting home runs. Yeah. A little bit different. Yeah. I'm a pretty good power hitter in the lineup now. Millwood is checked for the signs down at third with Yost. In at third base, Ventura. Zeal ready to charge and does. And Millwood, after I tell you how good he is as a bunter, 
has a two, tight, two strike count on him, having fouled both off. And Ventura applying a lot of pressure from third base right in on top of him, and that puts it uh, makes it quite a bit different when you're trying to bunt for a sacrifice. It took a part of the field away. You're exactly right, Ralph. Ventura charging in, taking that third base line coming up there, and you can see Millwood. He was trying to go to first base with this ball because of the pressure from Ventura. Two strike count. Ventura thinks he's going to bunt again. Moves in. Millwood squares and strikes out. So Kevin Millwood does not help his own cause as Hampton gets it. And there are two down. Boy, there are those in the game that say this is inexcusable. Let's say the old timers not being able to do it. Yeah, bad head goes down, body moving. <laughs> Just a couple of things that we're doing wrong Only there, Coach. A couple, Only a couple. Okay. <laughs> well, there are two down now. The leadoff batter, Kelby Overis, is up. This man's making a difference in this team. They got him. Oh, picked him off. And that is a pickoff. Burkell, the rookie, gets picked off by Mike Hampton by a mile. Leaning the other way. Uh, time is running out to cast your vote for those you think should be in the All Star game. A few of the Mets players currently in second place in the voting. Edgardo Alfonso, we were talking about earlier. You can vote online until July 1 at MajorLeagueBaseball.com. So log on, MajorLeagueBaseball.com, and vote today. Because if you don't, the chance is gone. Number 31, Mike Piazza. A 17 game hit streak in which he's hit 377, seven home runs, and 27 RBIs in those 17 games. And he's had at least one RBI in the last 12. Piazza is going to the All Star game. And a strike on the outside corner from Millwood. What a first half of the season Mike Piazza is putting up. Coming into today's play, continues to be among the leaders in all kinds of offensive categories in the National League, including fourth best hitter behind Helton, Vidro, and Guerrero. There was a swing right there against the Millwood fastball up, and Mike, pa Mike Piazza is a good high fastball hitter. There you can see the record that he tied, National League record, and RBI in each of the last 12 games. Old Ripper Collins. <laughs> Ralph, Ka Ralph Kiner knows that name. I know him well. He was my manager at Albany in 1942. Switch hitting first baseman, held the record for the most home runs by a switch hitter in the National League for 38 until Howard Johnson broke it, and later on broken by a Met player. One ball. One two count of Piazza. Breaking ball off the end of the bat. Andrew Jones. That other Met player, Todd Huntley. Saw Andrew Jones last night make one of those basket catches. And I didn't have a chance to talk to uh, Bobby Cox about it. Bobby Cox does not like basket catches, and he didn't do it that time. He likes to style out there a little bit, doesn't He's he? He's really a nonchalant outfielder and one of the best in the business. There's no question about that. He can go get him. Ventura fights that one off the other way into foul territory. Sixteen overs, fifty-one RBIs for Robin Ventura on the year. Two for six against Millwood. Third baseman who missed a couple of games for the Mets with that bad throwing shoulder, which he says is now just about 100%. 0-1 delivery. And a 1-1 count on him. 
Left handers hit Millwood by the book. Better than right handers. 283. Right handers 257. He's given up 14 home runs, seven each way. Outside for a ball, two and one to Ventura. Couldn't touch Millwood last year, what Tom was talking about. They hit 202 off him. That was the best number in the National League for opponents' average. And he misses outside again, three and one. That's where he'll get in trouble every once in a while. He gets lazy with his front side, and when he misses up and away to those left handers, he's just not getting through the ball. He has a real slow pace from North Carolina, kind of a slow demeanor about him. 3 1 delivery. And he walked it. And both of these pitchers have given the opposition an open door here in the first two innings. And at this point, neither team's been able to take advantage of it. Second walk given up by Millwood. It looks like he just collapses in his left side, and his right side can't catch up as he's throwing the ball. When I talk about demeanor, you know, we always think about Bob Gibson and how aggressive he was. Now, watch his left side. Is he aggressive with it? Yeah, not too bad. Ball just ran away. He can get real lazy with that front side, start missing up and away and farther away from those left handed hitters. I tell you what, you don't have to run up on it. He's got pretty good heater. They're measuring uh, into the 90s on his fastball here 94 95. Todd Zeal with a runner at first base and one out. Upping here's numbers to that 300 mark. And that's in this homestand. The hitters have had their way pretty much. Todd Zeal. Not had a home run in this homestand yet. Four RBIs. One of the things that has really helped the Mets of late has been the fact that the sixth, seventh, and eighth batters have really started to hit, hitting well over 300 with three home runs and Last seven games. Breaking ball missed away. Two ball, one strike count. Millwood continues to throw a lot of pitches, working behind the hitters. Zeal's going to make him wait a bit as he looks down to Cookie Rojas for the signs. One thing about Millwood, it, uh, he might have the record for the slowest pitcher from the dugout to the mound. <laughs> it takes him forever to walk out there, like he's going to the gas chamber. <laughs> He feels that way. He's in deep trouble. It does. It took him forever. Ralph and I are both watching him in between innings, and it was like a three-hour special for him. Like a little kid that uh, is going to see his dad in the woodshed. Boy, he didn't want to go there. You talk about body language. He's uh, not in a real big hurry to get out here. And that's all part of. It. That's all part of that salesmanship everybody talks about. And you talk about those aggressive, aggressive pitchers that want to get on that mound. Make you impatient. 2 2 delivery. Breaking ball. Waited on it. Double clutch. Center field. Jones. And there are two down. He just got away with that one. He has a double clutch, but Todd Zeal kept his hands back and was just a fraction out in front. It looked like the ball stayed up. Good curveball. He's got a good top to bottom curveball. A little roller right about mid thigh. Well, just missed that ball. That's it. That's an old hanger just above the knees, Ralph. Well, yeah, one thing about uh, announcers, pitchers, ball players, they call sliders, call curveball sliders. And that was a curveball they threw there, which is entirely different from a slider. It's a bigger break, slower, and that was a top to bottom kind of curveball. It was a roller, though, however, mm -hmm. not a hanger. Yeah, that ball would roll. He has a tendency to drop that elbow on. Kind of get underneath the curveball and gets a rolling effect. A real good curveball is that one that looks like it's coming in a fastball and then boom drops off the table. Chopper by Peyton to short for Cal will take it to the bag and that'll do it. So Peyton hitting to the fielder's choice. No runs, no hits. A base runner left on. Bats being quieted. Must be a great pitching duel. Could be with Anthony Millwood. Let's take a look at our Toyota out of town scoreboard. Florida's got the lead over Montreal right now. Philadelphia at home against the Pittsburgh Pirates. And these are later starts.
Cincinnati St. Louis splitting their four game set so the Reds didn't get anything out of that. What a beautiful night here in New York. Mercy. Upper 70s when we started this ball game. Kids uh, out of school of course and now celebrating the long 4th of July weekend. Gelvio Barris and a great weather weekend is anticipated as this series will continue. Greg Maddox who had the flu and didn't start yesterday scheduled to start tomorrow against Al Leiter. Nine and two against nine and one. Tom Glavin against Glendon Rush on Sunday. We'll have that game right here. Sunday afternoon. And that is a Sunday afternoon game by the way. It is a 110 first pitch Sunday. On the WB 11. Two oh delivery. And Kelby Alvarez leans under that one and a 3 0 count on the leadoff battle. Well, taking it all away, and you know, with a 2 0 leading off the inning, nobody out. He's going to take that pitch, Mike Hampton. You don't like to see where Mike Hampton is getting behind his hitters and have control problems. Both of these pitchers are doing it the hard way yep. to the start of this game. They're having to throw a lot. 3 1 delivery. <laughs> Well, you know, big series, Gary, four game series. A couple of games in the last column is all that keeps them apart. 50,000 people in the ballpark. All the John Rocker fluff going around. I mean, this is more press than anybody would ever need. Fouled off, three and two still. One of the things about Hampton, his philosophy of pitching is don't give in to the hitter. And that way you do walk more batters than you normally would, but you don't throw those fastballs down the middle that way. Well, you don't. That, there's two. There's two points to that, Ralph. Exactly what you're talking about. Fastballs not down in the middle, but three of those pitches that he threw weren't even close. Yeah, but no chance. With him, you don't worry about that. More a high hop. That one, I think, hit the cut of the grass. Mel Morrow was ready to play it, and it took a high hop on him, and he could not get to it. And the leadoff man is on. Well, a bad bounce, and it cost the Mets an out right here. As Moore had to go up and try and glove it. He knew he had to hurry, though. Ferris very fast down the line. And we'll see how it scored. It's a green score to base hit. It is indeed. Gilvio Ferris now two for two. And Hampton making the move on him at first base. As we said, Varis has added the on base percentage. The Braves have not had in the leadoff spot for a long time, and speed, which they've not had for a while. He is behind uh, three others in the stolen base leader department in the National League. Thomas Goodwin leads it with 35, Castillo and Eric Young, and then Varis. Barris, the lone run that scored, came home on the Javi Lopez RBI. Andrew Jones waiting at the plate. Hampton to him and misses away. Ball one. Barris not a big lead at all and Hampton misses outside again a 2 0 count on Andrew Jones. You wonder what Bobby Cox might do in this situation. Yeah nobody out speed on first but you got Jones Jordan Galarraga coming up. You don't want to lose base runner. You take the chance of hitting the double play. But. Hard ground ball base hit Moore is not going to get that one. Single into left field. And Andrew Jones is on. He's got an eight game hit streak now with that base hit. And again, Atlanta threatens with runners on at first and second base. Well, they couldn't script it any better. A couple of base hits, two on, nobody out. Who do you have coming up? Jordan and Galarraga after that. That's one of the reasons why you don't run when you've got that kind of thunder coming up in the middle of that lineup. You play a little bit more conservatively because you had guys can really pop the ball out of the ballpark. Brian Jordan one of those stands in he's the leading National League hitter against left handers 
batting 444 off southpaws. Nobody better against lefties than the man hitting third tonight for Atlanta. And Jordan takes that pitch outside, ball one. Hampton has now thrown 36 pitches, and 17 of them, almost half, have been balls. 1 0 count on Jordan. Look at second base. Look out. Check swing. Alfonso was standing on second base when Hampton delivered that pitch. Yeah, that's the pitcher's ball right there. Alfonso was covering for a pickoff attempt at second base, and the hole was wide open at second. Now, maybe he threw it, did it on purpose, though, Ralph. That's the other thing. You know that the hitter's not going to be able to hit the ball over there because you know you're going way inside. And I think that the hitter swung at that pitch because he saw the second baseman moving. Now that does happen. You say yes, well, if, you know the infielder was out of position. But if you know you're going in real tight to that right-hander, he's not going to be able to hit the ball to the right side. You better not make a mistake. <laughs> yes, and that's the point. <laughs> hey, you make a mistake, you look like a fool. But if you know he's not going to be able to hit it over there, Jordan with a two-ball, one-strike count. This time to center field, Peyton. Wind is blowing a bit towards right. Throw to third will hold the runner. Jordan is retired. Always a big out. One down. Hey Peyton continuing to solidify his spot in center field, especially with a defensive play and the hot bat. He's had it all going. He had that tough ball last night off of Galarraga. I think he knew he had nobody to. Throw out at third base here, but you want to show that opposition that hey, I can throw, and that may hold runners later in the game. That's why he's doing that. And he had that arm operation that uh, kept him from being able to play and throw. His arm is back. Now Andres Galarraga, dangerous spot hit by a pitch his first time up. Runners at first and second and one away, and a chopper foul outside of third. Last night. Big drive to right center field, the ball away, and that's a one pitch. He don't want to throw Galarraga, the ball away. And he was hit his first time up and a pitch inside. Galarraga, a very outstanding hitter, has had two different careers one with Montreal, and then he went to a punt and finally revived the career at Colorado. And the credit goes to Don Vader. His hitting coach at St. Louis, and he got him back to where he could hit again, and then got him over in Colorado and now playing with the Atlanta Braves. Another great trade by Atlanta picking up Galarraga to play first base. They had made some wonderful moves over the last 10 years. He had no idea whether Galarraga would be all right this year or not. Neither really did he. But he's more than all right. Non Hodgkins lymphoma. In the back, kept him out last year, and it was serious, and he was scared. He came through that medical part of it and has come through all the rest of it as well, and now is playing as well as he's ever played. 15th year, he's 38 years old. In fact, he just turned, he's 39 now. He turned 39 uh, this month. 2 1 delivery to him. Alaraga takes the pitch inside, 3 and 1. Galarraga became the first man to lead a league in strikeouts and also lead the hit league in hits. First man to ever do that. He's a strikeout guy. He does strike out a lot. Boy, Hampton on Varis, he was three and zero. Oh. Jones, he was two and zero. Oh. Jordan, two and one, and Galarraga, three and one. He's been behind every hitter this inning. And this is a dangerous man to be behind. Lopez on deck. 3 1 pitch. Oh, wow ball. Oh. They just, just missed that. Just, oh. Just missed it. Well, that is a that's a 3 and 1 swing right there and he knows it too. This is picture perfect, Ralph. Just a shade in front. Got the pitch he wanted to hold the foul and now do they send the runners on the 3 2 pitch? Look at that reaction. Grab that bat. He knows it too. At the bottom half of the ball, he says, "Let me have that back. Let me have one more shot at that one." He has grounded into a double play nine times this year. 
two on one down. Three two delivery. Runners go. Swung on and foul tipped. And Piazza took that one. On the body. Well you were talking earlier Gary about. What a phenomenal first year that Mike Piazza has had. Average home runs and RBIs. And that alluded to well if you can keep it up in the second half of the year and that's. The tail right there is health and how much that position is going to beat him up. You talk about a catcher just. And he said there's no way to escape it. He loves to catch. He's great pride in his catching. But can he if he does get his bumps and bruises can he hit 360 plus the rest of the year. Depends on how much it gets beat up back there. Three two still one away runners went last time. Varis at second Jones at first they're off again. Fouled again. And again off Piazza. Only two catchers have led the league in hitting in the National League. One was Bubbles Hargrave way back when. And Ernie Lombardi, who led the league twice in hitting. Lombardi, one of the outstanding hitters in baseball history, was the slowest runner <laughs> as a regular player to first base, or any base, as a matter of fact, <laughs> of anyone. In All the time. 3 2 delivery, third 3 2 pitch, and he walked it. Ten pitches in that at bat. And the sacks are full again. Well, there he is again. Second time he's come up in the ball game with the bases loaded. Abby Lopez picking up the RBI and a bases loaded walk his first time up. One away still. Chased one away. Has he been watching? Got ahead of him there, and that's the pitch we were talking about earlier in the ball game as we open it up. That Mike Hampton makes his living down and away to those right handed hitters. A great movement down and away on that outside corner, down about knee high. Base is full, one out. Lopez, and he's got a base hit into left field. There is scores. Jones to the plate, overthrow. He is safe. Here comes Galarraga. No They clear the bases on a single. Javi Lopez picks up the base hit. Easily scoring Varis. Andrew Jones made it in. The ball squirted away. And incredibly, Galarraga took a huge chance and won. The throw from Benny Agbiani and left a little bit off of line. Yeah, the runner beat it. Bounced away from Mike Piazza and he couldn't find the handle. Mike Hampton was at home plate. They'd have had Galarraga easily at home plate, but Mike tried to throw it before he got his hands on it. And Piazza will pick up an air on the play. Two RBIs for Abby Lopez on a single. Galarraga scores on an error that will be charged to Mike Piazza. So Javi Lopez has a three RBI game with a bases loaded walk and a two RBI single and it is four nothing Atlanta and that one towards third Ventura holds the runner Bobby Bonilla thrown up he's old for two and there are two down when you know it of all the people in the lineup who have been hitting the ball hard lately it's been Javi Lopez and he ends up three RBIs in weird fashion. Robin Nea hit into a double play to end the first inning. Now grinds out. And then this play at the plate, the ball gets away. Piazza trying to get to it. Can't find the handle. And the unearned run scores. We've talked about it before, generally in other situations on balls at the plate with runners on base. If you make that initial move to go immediately, you got a real chance. That's the hesitation usually that will resulted in an out. Galarraga forced the issue by not hesitating. And he's 39 years old. And Ned Yost down there who's yelling at go 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 go. And Galarraga is a little bit of in, in the Lombardi class too. In the Lombardi. As far as speed we're talking. 
You also don't want any collisions with Andres Gordo, right? <laughs> especially if you're the pitcher covering the plate. <laughs> you don't want to admit it. Trinidad Hubbard fouls it back. Two strike count, so three runs in here in the third inning. The Atlanta Braves have jumped out to a four nothing lead. The Braves continue to be the nemesis of the Mets. The last two years, they've won the series each year nine to three. National League playoffs beat the Mets. One last night in the first game these teams have played, and have a four nothing lead here. Long way to go. Trinidad Hubbard, the 0-2 delivery to him, bounced that one. That's a wild pitch, and down to third goes Javi Lopez. Well, this is not Mike Hampton at his best. Well, you hear us talk many times about a 59-footer. That ball that bounces about a foot in front of the plate. This is about a 55-footer. That one hit on the grass. That's as bad as you can get right there, as far as not getting on plate. Maybe it was the splitter. Certainly something Mike Hampton could not control. Not very often you see a pitcher throw the ball and it hits the grass and the cut in front of home plate. Trinidad Hubbard swings and misses. So Hampton comes back and gets the strikeout, but the fans booing here. Three runs in. One big costly error. Four nothing Graves. With Ralph Kiner and Tom Seaver, I'm Gary Thorne. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Here at Shea on Friday, let's take a look at the Toyota Out of Town scoreboard. Tampa Bay has tied the Yankees. Toronto, Baltimore. Baltimore, wow, what a struggle, huh? Cleveland, the same. They're playing at home. Big match up there. Are those two playoff teams? Other games later starts. The way it's going in the American League, if it were to go that way all year long. There'll be two teams from that Western Division. Here's your man, Ralph and Tom, on his way to the mound. Now, here he goes in that speedy move to the mound, and this is not slow motion. Is he going to get there? <laughs> there he goes. That's there he it. goes. That's it. I'll tell you one thing you got to give him. He, he is consistent. Is that's the way he's been coming out every inning. <laughs> oh boy. Those Southern boys, they're not going to pick up their pace. Nice and easy does it every time. And now, after that strenuous effort, Kevin Millward does some cleans and actually threw the ball. 1 1 to Agbayani. And the breaking ball is in there for a strike one and two. That's a nasty pitch right there. That's a lock your knee pitch right there. Outstanding breaking ball from Millwood. He has a great fastball and a great curveball. And Leo, as we talked about, Leo Mazzoni trying to get him to pitch just that way. That's good curveball right there, Ralph. That was a good one. That was a straight downer. Yeah, for a ball, but that was a good pitch. And there is the original bobbin head doll right there, Malzoni. <laughs> <laughs> That's good breaking ball right there. I'd like to borrow that. Mazzoni or the ball? That curveball. That was a good one. Oh. That was a darn good one. Good bob and head look there, though. Oh, let's get off. Two ball, ball, two strike count. <laughs> Benny Agbayani. And the fastball is a chopper. For Cal, it's short. Ooh. What Ooh. an arm. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, my. <laughs> Hello. I thought maybe it was only me that he was. Getting the attention there got you too, didn't it? Sean Denson. Look at this. Woo! He has a gun Woo! right there. And he was laughing after looking at Kilby Barris, who was giving him the what for at second base. I mean, he did have to hurry a little, but hey, 50,000 people in the stands. Rookie. Rookie. Been out. Just off the DL. Here's my captain, the league's best hitting pitcher. What's the old saying? Remember my name? It'll give you something to remember. That's, that's, that's a pretty good arm. Pretty good calling card right there. 19 years old. You remember 19. Foul back. 0 2 count on Hampton. Mr. Siever. Now. You were in the Marine Corps. That's that just, time, you know what? I'm just going to say it's probably <laughs> in the Marine Corps. Probably out here. 
thinking about how to clean that rifle and shine them boots, you know. That's why you've led such an exemplary uh, life. Ain't that the truth. And, and an off speed pitch on an 0 2 count. Jones. We're waiting for that first basket catch in center. He hasn't made it. Our guess is Cox had a word with him. He's had one, two, three fly balls. He's had the glove up on all of them. Two more runs, we may get one. Yeah. Yeah. If the Braves were to get up six nothing, he might sneak one in. All the people, of course, uh, remember Willie Mays, who made basket catches and did it well. But he was not the first. There was a guy that played shortstop named Rabbit Ranville, who did the basket catch way back, back in the 20s. Look at us. Look, he's into it. Come on, dance with us. He can speak four languages and can hit in every one. And clearly is uptight about this ball game. Melvin Moore, a two down, nobody on. Moore, a draw walk his first time up. One of two surrendered by Millwood. Millwood has not struck anybody out yet. That's another difference. Not that it's better or worse, but Millwood had some K's. That he piled up last year, over 200. Swung on and missed, and a one ball, one strike count. Two down, bases empty. Millwood coming off a no decision against Milwaukee. Beat Chicago in the game before that. He gives you innings. 2 0 against the Mets, lifetime. Up high, two ball, one strike count. Thing the Braves have done two nights in a row so far. Really quieted a big crowd. And that will be caught or trapped. Somebody give me a sign. He got it. Mel Mora and a fine play made by Trinidad Hubbard. He hauled it in and held on to it. Hubbard in left. One, two, three inning for Millwood. Welcome back to Shea Stadium. You know, when Rick Reed took that line drive off the wrist last night in the third inning, he said he couldn't pick up the baseball because of the white sign behind the plate here at Shea Stadium. Well, we've done some checking, and it turns out the sign isn't really white. It's a color called Cool Gray Number 4, and it's actually been approved by Major League Baseball. In fact, there are signs of the same color in 14 other parks across the country. Does that make it any better? No. Can you tell the difference between cool gray number four and white when a baseball is coming at your head? Probably not. But Steve Phillips says we're checking into it and there could be changes on the horizon. Back upstairs to you. It'll be changed. It'll be changed. It should be changed if it's not. I don't care what they call it. Cool gray is a shade of white. Procol Harlem 1961. Robin Ventura makes a play over the first base. Very good. So and another for yeah, Callis. Everything is not black and white. <laughs> That's uh, right. That's right. Especially when your wife is picked, uh, picking colors for the living room. You know. Yeah. They've got all these fancy names. It's still white. I used to try. I actually wrote a letter to the National League office one time, trying to get the National League to make Lee Wire, who was a big man and an umpire in the National League, to get rid of the white vest that he had on, protected vest, chest protector, underneath his coat. You'd look in there as a pitcher and you'd see the catcher and then up above him would be Lee Wire in his mask and a white coat right up above the top of the, of the actually the catcher's head. Now the ball can come out of that. I didn't think that was uh, going to be too beneficial. Mora double clutch didn't get him. He had only one chance and Millwood is on probably an infield single although he did have to double clutch trying to make that throw. And he's the guy we were on about walking slowly to the mound. He can run when the base hits inside. You know what? That's total decoy. He was decoyed everybody in this ballpark, including Mr. Kiner, Mr. Seaver, <laughs> and including maybe Mr. Moore. Base hit. Six hits in the ball game now for the Braves, and with one away, Millwood is on. Our Toyota line score four six and zero oh for Atlanta. Nothing up there, but an error for the New York Mets. Two walks have been their only base runners. Now Kelvin Alvarez the leadoff batter grounds it towards short Mora gets another chance Alfonso relay got him and that had to be done in a hurry too 
No runs, a base hit, and nobody left on. The Braves and Mets from Shea Stadium in the second of four games. And the Atlanta Braves on top in this one, four to nothing. Kevin Millwood has just made his way to the mound after being on the bases. Took a little extra time. Javi Lopez, the catcher, doing something in that last inning to take a look at here. Lopez, a very active catcher in communicating. This is when Melvin Mora was up. Uh, watch his right shoulder. Uh, you see the hand come right down there. And that's Lopez and the right shoulder. I mean, his left shoulder, excuse me, and he's tapping it for a reason. Now, I, the only thing I can think that we talked about a little bit earlier in the broadcast that Kevin Millwood, if he has trouble, it's getting lazy with his left side, his front side. So they may have had a meeting talking about Javi Lopez and Millwood and Leo Mazzoni. Say, listen, I'll have certain things that I want you as the catcher to tell the pitcher, remind him all the time to not make these kind of mistakes. And you may just have hand signs, and Lopez may look out at Millwood, tap that left shoulder, say it's a reminder, don't get lazy with that left side. And he may have a different sign, Gary, for you know every pitcher on the ball club, but his pitching coach might want to remind them that uh, each individual pitcher of it, whatever the problem might be, to keep it from arising. So the catchers for the Atlanta Braves bear a Big responsibility with the pitching staff. Bobby Cox, Leo Mazzoni believe in their catches. That one hit by Bell, center field. Jones back. Not going to get this one. All the way to the wall. First hit of the ball game for the Mets. A stand up double for Bell. This ball was really hit hard a real laser to left center field and Jones an outstanding fielder just couldn't run that one down. Bell had hit a ball hard his first time up and hit into a double play but right there he leads off with the double and the Mets have to come from behind here they're four runs down like they were in yesterday's ball game. An 11 game hit streak now for Derek Bell. As he picks up the leadoff double, his 19th two bagger. Edgardo Alfonso, and for the first time tonight, the Mets fans into the game. Alfonso flied out to right field his first time up, one for 15 now, lifetime off Millwood. One on one. Alfonso continues for the New York Mets to be the man who crosses the plate the most 61 runs scored leader on the Mets team and number nine in the league Jones tagging his bell Jones wants to try for him oh, right on the money with a throw but not in time Holy mackerel. Well, you hear stories okay, about Andrew Jones that Ralph was talking about. He Mike. mentioned it in that replay yeah. of the double by Derek Bell. Surprised when Andrew Jones doesn't catch the ball because he is such a good center fielder. And you hear about the arm, and you don't really believe it until you see it. That was phenomenal. And why does Bell have to hustle all the way? Boom, that's why the ball is right there. Well, he gets in perfect throwing position. Takes a double step and comes up and throws it on the fly to third. Sort of a Roberto Kamini type throw. Two time gold lover, center fielder, Andrew Jones. Mike Piazza, runner at third and one out. Four nothing, Braves. Bell with that head first slide. Two guys who enjoy the game just challenged one another. Andrew Jones almost had a smile on his face when the ball was coming down because he knew he was going to throw to third. He didn't see it. And Bell had a smile on his face when he got up after eating some dirt over there. You got to play this thing. You might as well have some fun. These two do. 
Well, the infield is back. They're willing to give up the run to get an out. Had Piazza leaning away on a pitch that was away. You do not see Mike Piazza make take too many bad swings. And that breaking ball was fooled completely. No one got him out front. The first time that Piazza was up. He was out in front of the ball, hit the ball softly to center. Mike Piazza, one of the best fastball hitters in baseball. And that one popped up shallow center. Second base, Barris. And Bell will stay right there at third, and there is one of those big outs. Two down now. Here you see for Derek Bell, a run scored in each of the last nine. It ties the Mets record held by Mackie Sasser, Bernard Gilkey, and John Olerud set in those seasons. One run each of the last nine. He's at third right now with two down. There's Derek Bell, who's found uh, the hot streak again. Went cold for almost three weeks at the plate. This homestand has been a lifesaver for him. He's hitting over 400 during the current homestand. Now it's up to Robin Ventura now for the big hit. Two down, fourth inning. Talking about talking about Derek Bell, I talked to him when he was in the middle of that funk and that big slump, and he says, oh, I have it every year. Happens every year about this time. I just gotta work my way through it. Tries this, tries that. He said, I can go back every season and have just about the same time. <laughs> it never affected his smile, though. He just he loves it. He could he could play 27 innings a day, and he'd want to play nine innings of each of the three ball games. Now he's talking to the Atlanta dugout. That's who he's joking with there. Timeout taken as uh, Ventura wanted to step out. Somebody's on him over there in the Atlanta dugout. He's still yak. There it is, right there. One strike count, two down. And Tura takes it inside and up high. You know, talking about Mackie Sasser, he had a problem throwing, sort of like Knobloch of the Yankees. He couldn't throw the ball back to the pitcher. He'd walk it back. One and one. The Chuck Knobloch, Dale Murphy, psychological inability to do something with the baseball. Mackie had it bad. And a great guy who struggled. And there, there, there have been, been others. There have been some pitchers that have not been able to throw an intentional base on balls. Yeah, that's yep. true. Guys yeah. that do it for a living. Ray Sadecki was one of them. Isn't that amazing stuff. One, two, count, two down. Millwood to Ventura. I've forgotten the name of the pitcher, but Gene Mock, managing the Philadelphia Phillies, brought an infielder in to back up the catcher when they were walking the batter intensively. And that's not allowed. Yeah. He yeah. made the infielder go back out to his position. You can't back up a catcher on an intentional walk. You can't have more than one person in foul territory. <laughs> said, nope, get that person back on the field. He can't have two guys on one team looking the opposite way. <laughs> <laughs> well put. Well put is right. <laughs> Mackie Sassy used to drive the Mets pitchers crazy. Because he'd have to triple clutch to try and lob the ball <laughs> back to the mound. He did. And it was sad. It was, he was a pretty good left handed hitter. He was a catcher with some pretty good power, but got into that and it just ended a career. Two ball, two strike count on Robin Ventura. And away, and it's three and two. Of course, they had Steve Sachs who played for the Dodgers. He couldn't throw the ball like Knobloch. And uh, Guerrero, Pedro Guerrero, was playing third base, and they said, "Why do you? What do you think about a third? He says, "I pray they don't hit the ball to me." And they said, "What else?" He said, "I also pray they don't hit it to Steve Sachs." <laughs> Three, two, and he went after one inside. The first strikeout for Millwood in the game, and Bell is left stranded at third base. No runs, one hit. Strike three. Boy, what a magnificent evening here to take a look at that sun setting in New York City. Beautiful sky. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Let's take a look at our trivia question as well. Brought to you by Dodge. Mike Piazza has 29 RBI 
or if you're a traditionalist and wrong 29 RBIs which I am in June what is the Mets record for RBIs in one month. It of course is runs batted in so correctly it's supposed to be RBI. I've never bought that. I don't buy that. I don't either. It doesn't sound right. It's not to a ball I know it's I know too. it's right. <laughs> That's right. But it doesn't sound well, right. Well I mean technically yeah. Andrew Jones. And fouls that one off for a strike. There's also the other expression in baseball you hear it all the time which is romantically incorrect. I hit the ball good. Should say I hit it well. But ball players say I hit it good. Hit it good. And if they're really bad, they say I hit it real good. And if they're really bad, they write announces <laughs> letters. <laughs> Jones right off the fist. Good pitch by Hampton. He'll uh, take it over the underhand toss. Jones retired. One for three. For Andrew Jones now one away. All right, let's hear it. All right, I got to pull this out of my briefcase. You ready for this? I got a. A letter from Salvatore Marandino. He was a high school teacher for 30 years in English. And he says all this junk about not referring to RBIs is exactly that. It is grammatically incorrect. No. RBIs is correct. Except the apostrophe has three excuses to excuse me, uses to show possession, to indicate omission in a contraction or a date, and to form the plurals of letters, numbers, and words named as words. Thus, the third rule is applicable. All right, I like that. He dots his J's, he dots his I's, and the number of RBIs indicates the proficiency of a hitter, proficiency of a hitter in the 1990s. So you really have to say RBI, comma. No, <laughs> not red. It's like a pistol. I like that. I, I like that. It's about time. So now we so have. We're some, going by this rule because we like it anyway. We will. Uh, we will. This is now the standing. We rule. will subpoena him anytime there are questions raised. He'll be our official expert witness. He was the uh, English department chairman, retired from Mount Vernon High School, and that is our rule now. And it's not ours. RBIs. It's not ours. BI. Good. So RBIs. RBIs. That's the way we said it for a thousand years. Yeah, for me, it was 54 years. <laughs> That's going to be. <laughs> Three one delivery Brian Jordan and a strike taken three and two for Kenny Singleton went to Mount Vernon High School I believe and I'm sure he says I'll be honest. Absolutely. Because he had a good English teacher. Mm -hmm. He had Mr. Marandino. That's, That's right. Had. Three two delivery by Hampton to right field Bell. With time and the ball two down. Four six and zero oh for the Braves. The Mets have had just one hit, committed one error, one unearned run allowed in this game. RBIs, bases loaded, walk by Javi Lopez in the first inning. Lopez with a two RBI single in the third, with the bases loaded and the third run scored on an error, charged to Piazza when this man Andres Galarraga came around on the throat of the plate, but got away from Piazza and then he couldn't find a handle. Two down, one strike count on the big cat. The Braves are shorthanded in this game and maybe for the entire series. Mike Remlinger, the bullpen man, had a MRI where they put the die in his arm and the die reacted negatively and he can't pitch today, maybe not tomorrow, day to day. So the bullpen's a little short out there. And as you see, Rocker sitting in the middle with teammates. That's right. That's MRI's apostrophe S. <laughs> the one-one is a check swing foul ball. They also don't have Chipper Jones, who's gone home to be with his family. And there's somebody else I want to tell Greg you about. Maddox had, uh, yeah, Greg food Maddox. Poisoning. He's going to pitch tomorrow. Supposed to make the start tomorrow. He's supposed to be all right. Reggie Sanders, who was supposed to start tonight in left field, has a back problem and was a late scratch. Galarraga chopper to short tough play more not quite so the cat is on Morris had one in and out day short I'll tell you there's been nothing at him it's either been a mile back or a mile in actually Morris had three plays that every time a play is not made at shortstop you wonder if the guy that's walking around with a cast in his arm now with Spoil this for so long. If he'd have made the play, now this is not an easy play at all. I don't think going to make it any better than that. And Galarraga can run. He may be big, but he's got decent speed. 
Pitch outside. Javi Lopez. Two down, one on. Hit number seven off Hampton. That's the pitch he's been chasing all night. One on one. He got a big base hit to drive in two runs, and he also walked with the bases loaded. And that was a perfect pitch, just on the edge of that outside corner, teething away from a right hand batter. Lopez wants to pull it and can't get to it. 1 1. This time he does go the other way. Galarraga will stop as Bell gets it. And Lopez is on again. What a night for Javi Lopez. Bases loaded walk. Bases loaded single. And now another base hit with two down. And here comes the Mets' favorite. Bobby Bonilla. Chipper Jones out. Bobby Bonilla is in the lineup. Switch hitter. First ball hitting foul. Well, Bobby says I've hit a couple of weak ground balls at third base. I'll try to hit it to right field this time. Been way out in front of every pitch. Well, they got to do something a little bit differently. Yep. And behind that one. Isn't Outfield that, playing them to pull. Right now he's saying I've got to be somewhere right in the middle of that. And they're playing the ball because the first two times they played, he pulled that ball right down to Ventura. Oh, one delivery to him. Strike on the inside corner. Bonilla was signed to a minor league contract in January. He's made his way up with the ball club and has become a, an important part of this Atlanta team. Five for 13 as a pinch hitter with six pinch hit RBIs and 279 overall starting the night. Still a two strike count. He's got a different stance here this time, third time up. And the first couple of times he came to the plate, his hands are way up high, and then he would come down to his shoulder. Now he's dropped his hands right down in front of his shoulder. But first time up to the plate, he was starting way up here with his hands. His hands are way up here and then coming down to his shoulder. Runners at first and second, two away. Off speed pitch, one and two. It just did not work with the Mets or Bobby Bonilla and he really wanted to come back to New York and play in his hometown. And it all went wrong. One two delivery to him up the middle Moore's got a chance and bobbled it and everybody's safe. And for Mora he's got to be wondering what next in this game. The error second of the night on the Mets. Had an easy force at second base. Well, a routine play that was not played routinely. We, we hinted at Ray Ordonez early. How many balls tonight would Ray Ordonez have been able to turn into outs? That's certainly one of them that just misplayed by Melvin Mora. There are times that your defense makes great plays for you. And the Game of baseball is teamwork. This is a situation where Mike Hampton has to kick it in the rear end and pick up his teammate Melvin Mora. Heath Lockhart pinch running at first base for Bobby Bonilla. There's Lockhart. Base is loaded. A chopper and Hampton gets it off the bat of Trinidad Hubbard. No runs, two hits, an error. The bases left loaded. At seven left on in this game by the Atlanta Braves. They continue to lead it for nothing. Back here in New York with Tom Seaver and Ralph Kiner, Gary Thorne, our Dodge trivia question. Mike Piazza, we need your help on this, Tom. He has 29 RBIs in June. What is the Mets record for RBIs in one month? And the answer is. 34 RB eyes Gary Carter September 1985 it's tough having to correct your homework here one more 34 down there see it 
Thank you very much. The English teacher is very proud of you. I like that. A plus. <laughs> <laughs> And there's Mike. For Piazza, no for two so far. Todd Zeal. No what a strike. There's a cute story about Malzoni uh, speaking his school and teaches. He went to a Catholic school and he collected all the cards on the Yankee team and he had the mantles of Fords and the Bears, but he couldn't get a Gil McDougal card. And the kid in his class had one of those cards and wouldn't print it. For the card. So he told the nun who was a teacher that the kid has some cards under his seat. The nun said, Bring him up here. She got him, threw him in the waste basket, basket, and Malzoni volunteered to take the waste paper basket out to the trash and got the Gilma Dougal card. That's cheating. Two strikeouts for Millwood. Gil McDougal. Line drive. Herb score. Herb score. The pitcher. Todd Zeal out of there. Two strikeouts for Millwood. Jay Payton coming up. Still makes you take a deep breath when you think about that. McDougal on the line drive. Herb score on his way to a great career, and it just, for all intents and purposes, ended. Put it. an end to it. Yep. He changed his uh, pitching delivery to follow through and face nice the pitch. batter, and that changed his whole pitching style. How about the time that John Matlock got hit here in this ball? Oh. The ball hit him in the head on the mound, the line drive back to the box, and bounced into the dugout on the first base side. And they were playing the Atlanta Braves, I think, and I think it was Marty Perez. Does that sound right? Could have been the shortstop. Yeah, that's what I'm guessing. For Cal. Peyton is retired. Quickly, there are two down. It's fireworks night here at Shea tonight. Lots of youngsters on hand. Fireworks set up outside the center field area. And come to think of it, now I know why that picnic pavilion is empty. Because it's fireworks night. Benny Agbayani, so they would not have sold that. Picnic pavilion is generally bought out by a one group or two groups. Tonight, obviously, nobody out there. Mentioned earlier, it might have been Rocker. That's the real reason, the fireworks, real fireworks. Foul back. That's that legal mind you have. Yes, well, I mean going down. Potential up, liability up. is very high if you had people out there with the fireworks going off in center field. Ooh, now I know what kind of lawyer you were. I mean, he's one liability, but fireworks is a whole other question. Agbayani with a two-strike count, two down. Rocker relaxing. Millwood's on a roll here. I talked to Bobby Cox for the game. I said, "Did you intend to get Rocker in the game last night, no matter what?" No, nope. said we we're going to play this along the line. But he said, I'll tell you something. I'm mighty happy that I got him into last night's game, got that over with, and obviously happy that he pitched one. He said, I'm just glad we got it over with in the first game. And got him in there to face a left-hander too. First out of the inning, came in to face Ventura. That was, that was a real smart move by Cox in last night's game. I thought that was really, I mean, really smart. You got two right-handers behind. First out in the inning, the most important out. Got a left-hander. Got a left-handed pitcher and rocker. Going to be able to get an out. Maybe get an easy out in the sense, get smooth, you know, make with all the stuff that was going around here at the ballpark. That was really a sharp move on his part. Yeah, but there is one thing about that no one talked about. It was a 3 2 pitch that he threw to the left hand batter, and it was out of the strike zone for ball four, and he swung at the ball. If he'd have walked that better, could have changed the whole. Oh, absolutely. Picture. I agree. 3 2 to Agbayani is gone. Three strikeouts for Millwood is getting tougher here as they move along. That's six outs in a row since Bell's leadoff double in the fourth inning, and the Braves continue to lead the Mets. Atlanta will be the host of the 2000 All Star Game festivities. Four nothing lead. Well, the Braves looking to take game two of this four game set. They won game one, six to four. Burkell takes the pitch down low, 0 for one, and a walk for the rookie shortstop. They named the captains the other day that all star game. Did you see that? Saw Dale Murphy. Yeah. And Dave Winfield for the National League. That's right. I haven't seen the American League yet. I don't think they've named the American League. No, maybe, League no, that's maybe Winfield's going to the American, American League. League. Maybe it is. American League. Yeah. yeah. Murphy for the National League. Yeah. 
Good for them. Especially Dale Murphy. Yeah. All those years he just missed it. Struggled with some really bad Atlanta teams. Pitch is taken inside and a 3 0 count on Rafael Ferkel. 19 years old out of the Dominican Republic. Sally League voted him number one in about every category when he played there. And he draws a leadoff walk from Hampton. That will get your attention right there. Leadoff walk and not even close in a 3 0 pitch. Not even close. So Dave Wallace, Bobby Valentine. That will that perks your interest right there. You know, uh, speaking of Dale Murphy, he came up as a catcher, and uh, he had a difficult time throwing the ball to second base. In fact, his father said if uh, second base had been center field, it would have been all right. <laughs> but uh, they moved into the uh, outfield. He had uh, the same had problem the we problem were talking throwing, about earlier. Yeah. He could not throw the ball from the catcher's position. Put him in center field, and he threw all the way to the plate. <laughs> it was not as difficult. It's a long throw. <laughs> Now Kevin Millwood with everybody expecting the bunt he tried to do it in the second inning and failed striking out for Kells on at first base now and Millwood will try and move him up three walks and two strikeouts for Mike Hampton a wild pitch and a hit batter in addition Mets have committed two errors there's also been a pass ball all kinds of that extra stuff in the box score Bunted hit him in the box one strike count on Millwood. Well, again, the pressure being put on by Ventura from third base. And this ball hits him in the batter's box. So it's a foul ball. It actually got him, I think, on the helmet or right in the face. Right off the bill of that batting helmet. One strike count on Millwood. Again Ventura coming in from third base. Millwood butcher boy right to him. Thank you. Alfonso. Double play. Well Bobby Cox took the bunt play off and uh, Millwood swung away and made contact. And a good play by Ventura from about 20 feet away on the bouncing ball. EP, good play all the way around. Casey Stingle on the butcher boy. The job that Alfonso did getting back to second base to take that throw. Tough angle. Not one you normally are at when you get the third baseman halfway down the line. And Alfonso, of course, was cheating over towards first base with Zeal charging in for the bunt. You can bet that Alfonso saw that pitcher pull it back too. He's heading to first base and he's watching the pitcher at home plate, Millwood, and he saw him fake the bunt. Soon as those hands came back and went down on the bottom of the bat, he's heading back for second base. Well, whoever taught Alfonso how to play baseball in Venezuela <laughs> knows he knew how to play the day he got to the major leagues. I hope they I hope he's writing a book. There's a few others we can give it to, Ralph. You bet. 1-1 one, one count on Kilby Overas. Edgardo Alfonso featured recently uh, in stories. I think it was USA Today on the second baseman in the National League and he was named at the top of that group and not unjustifiably so. 1-1 one, one is in the dirt by Hampton and a two ball one strike count on Veras. Kelby Overas has raised the on base percentage in that leadoff spot for this team. Last year the Braves were 318 as a team in leadoff hitters. Varus at 377 in on base percentage. Otis Nixon was the last Atlanta player to steal 20 bases. That was in 93. Kilvio Varus already has 21. 3 1 delivery. And Hampton's in with it 3 and 2. Andrew Jones waiting on deck. 3 2, and he walked him. Four walks given up by Hampton. The base on balls, Mike Hampton, right around the 100 pitch mark. Center 
Now, as Tom said earlier, the walks uh, have not been a problem of late. Hampton has not has lost only one game in his last nine starts. Walked only two in the last outing. And starting uh, starting to pile some up here. Andrew Jones up five walks now in the game, and the throw to first. The speedster Kilby Alvarez on. With two men out, I would think uh, Bobby Cox will have him try to steal second. Four run lead. Barris edging off behind Zeal. Jones takes it down low. Barris broke the wrong way. He broke back to first base on the delivery. Yost at third with the signs. The pitch was coming. He looks at the first base coach. Like, what was I doing? Deep to left field, but it's curving. It'll be a foul ball. Andrew Jones with a one ball, one strike count, and Varis back to first base. Behind Zeal. There he goes. Nope, comes back. Took three quick steps and stopped. Andrew Jones took it for a strike, one and two. Pick me off there, Ralph. I thought he was going on that one. I think you're exactly right. You wonder where he's going to go. Now, certainly with two strikes on Jones, somewhere he's got to go. If nothing else, even if you get thrown out, you get Andrew Jones leading off the next inning for the Braves. It's almost a can't lose situation. Either get it to scoring position. Or you got Jones next inning leading off. He was going and then came back. He started the second base. Hampton almost had his second pickoff. The other way to do this, if you're on first base and the speed of Ferris is get a huge lead and then just take off and get on the inside of that base path. Try to block the throw from Todd Zeal. That's another way to try to get around this situation. How about Zeal arguing? There he goes, delayed on the wild pitch. Well, he got there a little easier than he had expected. Yeah, it's a blocked it again. Barris didn't wait. A lot of those base runners down there are doing that, Gary. They're putting their hands on Todd Zeal now, trying to move him out of the way. Not the first one to do that. We've seen that in several series now where the runners at first are trying to physically keep contact with Todd Zeal, either get themselves a better look. So they get their man to scoring position one way or another. Andrew Jones, 2 2 delivery, a chopper towards short. Mora hurries it over there and gets it. Despite two walks in the inning, no runs. Base runner left on at second base, still four nothing Braves. As we head towards the All Star break, let's take a look at the Mets' upcoming schedule. Brought to you by Taco Bell. These Atlanta Braves, two more left in this four game series, and it's going to be Maddox and Leiter making the start in that ball game tomorrow, and Glavin and Glendon Rush says it'll go on Sunday. Then it'll be at Florida for three games: Monday at seven, Tuesday at four, July four. And then Wednesday at seven again. The Yankees, of course, seven, eight, nine. It's a four-game set with a rain out to be made up. And that big crosstown doubleheader. All coming up. By Captain leading it off for the Mets. He flied out his first time up. Millwood's going to start through the order for just the third time here in the sixth inning. Boy, there's a little something going on right there. Mike Hampton did not like that pitch and said something. And the home plate umpire started to look at him over his shoulder. Gary Cedarstrom was looking at him, and they're still going at it. He didn't like what he saw, talking about the umpire. Now either Hampton says that ball's not a strike, or you gotta give it to me. Now watch your reaction to the hitter and the umpire both. Now he's going to believe it. The umpire 
followed him right with his eyes. I don't know what he's arguing about. Right down the middle. Pretty good yeah. pitch, yeah. Yeah. A little bit of frustration. As we said, he leads all pitchers in hitting. 11 for 39 on the year. Breaking ball. There goes the bat. There goes Hampton. He's got to be tagged out by Lopez, who does it gently. I think he wanted to fire that helmet too. If he fired the helmet, he'd been thrown out of the ball game. He'll fire something over here. Cedar Strump letting it go. If he'd been a position player and turned like that, he might have been thrown out of the game. I might have. That's an automatic if the umpire wants to use it. Millwood. He's going through this game not striking anybody out. He had one strikeout in the first four innings. He has struck out three of the last four batters. Melvin Moore, the leadoff man, and Millwood up high to him, ball one. A walk and a fly ball out for Mora. Out hitting the Mets eight to one in this game. The only Mets hit a double by Bell leading off the fourth inning. One one delivery, bunting for a base hit. That was close to being out of the batter's box. Wow, I'm surprised they didn't appeal on that one. Home plate umpire called it right away. Oh man. He's out of the batter's box. His back foot was off the ground. And if his left foot's in fair territory, which it looked like it was, all well, those lines are gone. Now far the batter's box is concerned. Well, nobody squawked, nobody said a thing. One of the other umpires can help the home plate umpire on that call if he wants to. And oftentimes has a better view, first and third. One, two is up high, two balls, two strikes. You know, speaking of uh, batter's boxes and the coach's box, the catcher's box, I should say, the brave announcers superimposed the catcher's box and showed that the box was too small in Atlanta, in their stadium there. And they were then kicked off the, the team bus on the team plane. Second hit for the Mets. One out single here in the sixth inning. The brave announcers were not allowed to fly on the team plane to come back from Montreal to New York. And there's quite a rumor. And I talked with Skip Carey about that before the game tonight. I said, you know, we weren't the ones raising the issue. Davy Lopes was making the issue with the umpires and had already raised it. We were talking about what Lopes was saying and why he was protesting. And we get kicked off the plane. They are now back on it. A strike taken on the inside corner. They kicked the Hall of Famer off the plane. On, on sudden. sudden. Well more of that you got to be a cheerleader to do a local broadcast which I absolutely detest. She'll probably get me fired shortly, but <laughs> that's what we're coming to in this business. You don't cheer for the team you're doing, you get canned, kicked off planes. I mean, it's ridiculous. But hey, comedians can work up here. The 0 1 delivered a bell, and it's taken inside for a ball, 1 1. Well, they broadcast for Turner Broadcasting, and of course, Ted Turner owns the Braves. He also owns the broadcast station. Yeah, well, TBS. Yeah. We are not pressured by the Mets, just so I can say that officially and happily. I never have never in the had a Mets say anybody in your organization say one word to me about what to say or not say covering Mets baseball. And I agree. I think, and I, I credit them for that. 1 1. And up high. It's also been known that if you say that to certain broadcasters, they will say, no, you can't say this or say that. They'll go right out there and say it. Oh, some people <laughs> will. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> no. I don't believe you would. No, no I would not. No. No. 
Not until at least a second in. No. <laughs> at least a second in. That's right. It's like that five second rule of the Oriole. <laughs> picking it up off the floor. I have a two inning rule on saying things you're not supposed to say. And that's trying to mount a rally here. Two ball, one strike, count one down. Runner at first, and Bell has continued his hit streak to 11 games with a double, trying to move Mel Mora around. Hey, one of the things that Met fans have done, and they do almost right on cue, is they can sense something happening when all of a sudden you get a couple of base runners at the top of this lineup, and then you got Alfonso and Piazza sitting right out there looking in the bushes. 2 1 delivered to Bell. Outside corner strike the bell didn't like. You know who else thinking about that too. Mr. Hampton. Mr. Hampton and that other fellow in that Atlanta Brave dugout too. Oh yeah. Bobby Cox. He knows who's over there. <laughs> he knows those two guys can put a big hurt. Alfonso and Piazza back to back. Base runners in front of that number four hitter and there he is right there. Two ball, two strikes, one away. Check swing. Now earlier in the sequence of pitches, Derek Bell, the very first pitch, strike one, was a knee-buckling curveball. I mean, he got a jelly knee, as I think Ralph would use that term. The jelly you know? leg. Yeah. Jelly leg, yeah, the jelly leg. I mean, it was a dandy of a curveball. Bell has hit a, a fastball hard to second base for a double play and then lined that base hit in the left center. That was a fastball as well. Only one down here. Millwood will step off. That's as happened last night. Trying to rally from a 4 0 deficit. Bell 2 2. Breaking ball away. Full count on Derek Bell. Yeah, there was a curveball. They tried to make it just like the first pitch of the sequence here at this at bat. Look at this. And look at Derek Bell. Jelly legs. Well, that's a nasty breaking ball. Three ball, two strike count. The Mets are stranded only two on base with just two hits and two walks surrendered by Millward in the game. 3 2. Runner goes. Pop up. Second base. Oh, what a deke they did. Oh! And it's dropped! For Cal Waiting, and Andrew Jones will throw it there to get the force out. You talk about a deke job by a 19 year old. For Cal, the shortstop was down to play a ground ball forever. And he had Mora looking right at him. This, this is the slowest, slowest ground ball in the history of baseball right here. It was such a good decoy that a decoyed Varus at second base into dropping it. So that goes as a 4 8 6 out. Fielder's <laughs> choice. I have never, look at him laugh. I have never seen a player stay down like that in my life. Have you ever put a 4 8 6 put out on? Fielder's choice on your scorecard. First he deked the ground ball, then he deked the pop up as though he was going to get it. <laughs> there are wonderful moments in the game of baseball, and this is one of them right here. There's the second baseman going down like a ground ball. Now for Kell, the shortstop does it. And then Varis, the second baseman, can't find the ball and drops it. <laughs> Nothing that Moore could do. They had no choice. What do, think, what do you think Moore was doing? He says, this is a ground ball to both of them. No. <laughs> this, this ground ball is going to both the shortstop and the second baseman. That's one reason why you want to look at the hitter when you're running to second base. You want to know where that ball is. Moore figured it out. Obviously, the coach is helping him. They holler at him, Mookie Wilson and Cookie Rojas, but. <laughs> you wondered what was going on at second and short. If you just walked in and were looking at the field, it would be kind of amazing to think, where's the ball? Mel Mora got back to first, believing that was going to be caught. And then 4 8 6 on a forced play. Bell's at first, two down. Alfonso 0 for 2 in the game. Check swing, one around on it, one and two. That's an high fastball we're talking about that 
Millwood can throw. Looked like it's been going to be a good pitch to hit fastball and takes off right at the strike zone. And again, Alfonso, not a guy that you see take many half swings or poor swings of that fastball up in the strike zone. Millwood has had good stuff tonight. The Mets only with two hits. One to the count. Well, this is a huge out right here for the Atlanta Braves. Huge out. Two outs, ball, two strikes. And Mr. Piazza in the on deck circle. It's a big out for two reasons because if he gets Alfonso, guess who leads off? Yep. Right where the Braves would want it. One, two delivery. Alfonso's not going to let that happen. They set in the right field. Jordan up with it. Alfonso's on for Piazza. Bell goes to second. Mike, Mike Piazza. Tom Seaver big moments in a ball game. He had two of them. And one of them messed just one with the base hit and a great at bat by Alfonso. Piazza's yeah, 0 for 2. He's got a 17 game hit streak. 4 nothing Braves. Three hits now for the Mets. Right field in the yard. Jordan under it. Millwood wins the war for the moment. Gets the big out. Piazza retired. No runs. A couple of hits. Two left on by the Mets and the Atlanta Braves and Millwood throwing a shutout. Going to take a look at our Toyota out of town scoreboard, and then we'll show you this first. Though, look at this. This is the Deke short and second. Look at these guys. What is this? Hello. And then. When they got back to the dugout, <laughs> is there not a little kid in every professional ball player? How great is that? And watch this. Now watch who walks right through the middle of them. If we stay there, look at this. There goes the manager going, I'm not getting in this. I don't understand this. <laughs> the manager heading down the end of the other in the runway. He says, I want no part of this. Uh. <laughs> And that's going to be a base hit by Brian Jordan into the corner. Diving for it, Ventura. Throw by Agbayani. Not in time. A stand up double. Take a look at our Toyota out of town scoreboard for you now. Jordan leading off with a two bagger here in the seventh inning. Florida leading it. Philadelphia at home with a lead over the Pirates in the eighth inning. Milwaukee against Chicago. Important series there, especially for Houston. They're going to do anything. They have to make a move. Tampa Bay leading the Yankees. That game was 2 2. Baltimore over Toronto. Minnesota leading Cleveland. Indians struggling. So is Boston. Texas and Seattle. Texas close to being out of it. They don't come through here in the next week and a half with some wins. Andres Galarraga. Chopper to second base. Alfonso with the runner going to third. Makes the play. Well, Galarraga moved Brian Jordan up with the one away now. The way the Pittsburgh Pirates played back in the 70s, the lumber company, they they didn't play that way. They didn't play the minimum. At minimum there, Andres Galarraga wants to get that runner to third base. Get where you've got a chance at a sacrifice fly. And Mets are going to walk Javi Lopez. The Pittsburgh Pirates didn't play that way. Danny Murtaugh was the manager over there, and he said, All right, boys, we got a chance to hit the ball, get three good cuts every time up there. They went for the big inning, and they had guys that could back it up and play that way. But here's your number four hitter. The strategy of the game, you're up four to nothing. Galarraga does his job by just hitting the little ground ball at minimum. That's the minimum that he wanted. To the right side to advance the runner. And that's just good winning baseball. Say one thing for these, a lot of things for these Braves, but one thing we've seen tonight, I mean, here's a series enormously important for both teams. And if you want to see a team playing loose ball under what is supposed to be tense circumstances, you're looking at an Atlanta Braves team 
It's like they're in spring training. Well, they added. I mean, they're ready to play, but they are loosey goosey, having fun and drop the, the game. Drop the ball at second base and run in and make fun of yourselves and laugh. They're still going at it over there. And there's a lot to be said for that too. Just nice and relaxed and loose and don't worry about it. They still can't get over the dance they put on. <laughs> Barris with a towel over his head. And you got guys like Galarraga around. You can do this fine. As long as you give 100%, play smart and play hard, you can do this stuff because everybody's going to make mistakes. But don't make it from a lack of not hustling because yeah. that's the difference. That's the big difference between making errors. And that was certainly wasn't a matter of not hustling. It was a little confusion at second base, and the, shoot, the second baseman drops the ball. But it was it certainly wasn't a fact of not being in the game and not hustling, that's for sure. And something, you know what? They'll be laughing about this tomorrow. Keith Lockhart is getting his first at bat. Galarraga's joined in. And towards second, this is what the Mets wanted. Four, six. Not that. Run scores. Staying at first base is Lockhart. A double play, ground ball, and a throwing error, and Mora is having a night he would like to forget. Not all of it is fault out there at short. It just is not going his way. Five nothing Braves. Routine double play ball right here. Melvin Moore when he plays you're going to get more offense than you're going to get from Ray Ordonez. But as we have seen tonight the defense from Melvin plays that you would expect Ray Ordonez so important that shortstop how many times a shortstop is involved. You know, and some people will say, well, you know, Moore should be the shortstop because he's going to hit a lot more. You can't overlook the importance of the defense at that number six position, shortstop. It's just so vitally important. It is not an error since you do not assume that double play, and as a result, as an RBI credited to Lockhart, it just goes as a fielder's choice. It's not an error on the paper, on no. the record book, but it is a mistake. So they got the run in and have a five nothing lead. That's one of those places where statistics lie. They do not tell the whole truth. Just never shows up. Yeah, it's there. Trinidad Hubbard, 2-0 count on him. Popped up, shallow right. Bell moving in. And he's got it. One run on one hit. And it's a five-nothing Braves lead. Big house on hand here. Fireworks night, Friday night. Braves, take a look at our Toyota line score. 5 9 and 0 oh for Atlanta. 0 oh, 3 and 2 for the Mets. One honor and run for the Braves. Millwood has walked two, struck out four. Mike Hampton has walked six, one intentional, struck out two. Two wild pitches, hit batter. The Braves on top, Robin Ventura. The Mets with three hits in the game. Two singles and a double. Bell, Mora. Alfonso. Ventura with a walk in the second inning. The Mets have left just two base runners in scoring position. Bell made it over the third in the fourth inning. And then in the sixth, the Mets had runners at first and second. But Millwood been in charge. 1 1 delivery. Popped up. Ventura, third base or short. Shortstop for Cal. Millwood had the second best ERA in the league last year at 2.68. It has really jumped up this year on him at 5.10. Average against him 202 to 269 this year. He isn't getting the strikeouts, walking a few more. This looks more like the Kevin Millwood we saw last year. This is what the Braves want. This is what Leo Mazzoni wants. He wants his, wants his power pitcher. That can get you out with a fastball and get you out with a breaking ball. Mazzoni calls it. There's a base hit for Todd Zeal. Mazzoni calls it up and north and south. You can throw north and you can throw south, up and down. And not worry about the side to side stuff that Maddox and Glavin do. They made it, he made an interesting comment down there. He said, you know, I've told this young kid that you got 10 years to learn what Glavin and Maddox do. You don't have to use that for 10 years. You'll learn a little bit. Bit by bit every year. So you got power stuff and you got great curveball. Pitch that way for 10 or 12 years. And then pitch the rest of the way what you're learning by watching these guys. You don't have to pitch like Glavin and Maddox now. 
And he can pitch well. He can pitch with numbers like Glavin Maddox, pitching the way he pitches. Pitches his way with yeah. his strengths. Exactly right. With his strengths, which is being a power pitcher. And a strike taken by Jay Payton. For Payton tonight, 0 for 2. He's got a 10 game hit streak on the line. Met players who've tried to continue it as Bell's up to an 11 game hit streak. Piazza's got an 0 for 3, his 17 game hit streak on the line. Payton, a 10 game streak, is 0 for 2. Towards second base and under the glove of Barris, base hit. And the Mets have two on. Jay Payton does have an 11 game hit streak. More importantly for New York here in the seventh inning, two on and one away. The Braves did not play very good defense last night here. Whether they'd have gotten an out here on this situation in this ball or not, check the jump for Todd Zeal. Yeah, if he knocks the ball down, they get the out at second. Would have been a beautiful play just by a fraction. So again, last inning. Mets had a chance to put some runs on the board. They didn't do it. Now with one out, they've got a chance again. Millwood right at the 100 pitch mark. Agbayani fouls it back. Benny has been a good clutch hitter in his chances so far. 289 with runners in scoring position. 301 overall. Agbayani with runners at first and second and one away. Millwood generally. Is a fly ball pitcher. Now he has gotten a double play ground ball in the first inning. He doesn't get a lot of those. 0 1. Chased one up and in. High heater. That's exactly what we're talking about, Gary. That high heater. There's the bench for the New York Mets. Matt Franco is out in the on deck circle right now. There he is. He'll be pinch hitting for Hampton if he gets a chance, and there's only one away. Came back in the bullpen. Benny Agbayani swings through it. There's that fastball. Looked like you're going to get to it. And you just can't get high enough, can't get up enough. Looks good when it's getting there. Right up above the top of that bat and can't get on top of it. If you can throw hard, you can make a living right there. Up above the top of that strike zone. That ball borderline strike, and with two strikes, yeah, you gotta protect the plate. And it's not just tossed up there, that's a good hard fastball. Five strikeouts for him, and four of them have come since the fifth inning. Now Matt Franco, two on but two down. And Franco takes the strike. Franco's five for 29 as a pinch hitter. Mike Hampton is out of the ball game as he worked his way through seven innings, and they were not easy innings. Giving up nine hits and five runs, four of them earned. Fouled off by Franco. Quickly a two strike count on pitch hitter Matt Franco. Hampton did a credible job. Yeah, he leaves five to nothing. Maybe it should be four to nothing. He got a double play from Benia, which helped in the first inning. One of the marks of a real good pitcher is how do you keep your team in a ball game when you don't have your good stuff? Give them a chance to win. And that's what he's done here tonight. He may not be happy with it, but he's given this ball club a chance to win, and they still may win. He is four and six lifetime against the Atlanta Braves. Obviously the first meeting of the year. And as we told you this Braves lineup that started the game hitting over 360 collectively against Hampton. They've had they got five runs on nine hits off him in this one. One ball two strike count on Franco two down. Zeal and Peyton are the base runners with the Mets trying to crack through that zero on the scoreboard. Matt Franco nowhere near the numbers as a pinch hitter that he has been in past years with the Mets. One two delivery rips it base hit out of the reach of Galarraga Jordan that'll score one zeal crosses 
And it is a 5 1 game. Franco with an important two out hit for the Mets. His fifth RBI. With two strikes, it looked like a push changeup. Got that elbow, got it up over the plate. He has not made many mistakes tonight. Kevin Melwood did, has not, and made one here. Solid base hit by Franco. Franco on at first. Over to third base, Peyton. Mel Morrow, strike call. Moore in the leadoff spot. Speaking of which, you may have read that Darrell Hamilton went down for his rehab and got in one game. And that left toe is bothering him again. He's gone for an examination to Oakland today. So he's not playing again. 0 1 deliveries up high. Another one of those important outs, Gary, that we're talking about. 5 to 1 ball game. And the guy in the on deck circle can hit the ball out of the ballpark. And represents the tie and run. One one count on Mora. That pitch is up high by Millwood 2 and 1. Millwood goes deep into games on a Regular basis. He did so last year with his team. And this year again had his shortest outing, four innings on the season. 108 pitches thrown now. Does not have a complete game this year. 2 1 delivery. Inside again, 3 and 1. Nobody up in the bullpen. If there's nobody up there, now they are. It wasn't going to take it very long. Bruce Chen. Three one count Morrow. Three and two. Don Wenger, right hander, and Chen the lefty. Three two, two down, first and third. Franco goes, fouled straight back. in scoring position facing Millwood on another 3 2 pitch. Franco goes, struck him out. So Kevin Millwood sets the crowd back down as he gets Mel Mora on the strikeout. Mets come up with a run, three hits, but they leave two on after seven. Braves five, Mets one. Welcome back, everybody. 5 1, the Atlanta Braves are leading the New York Mets. And Eric Kamak, recently recalled from Norfolk, on the mound for the Mets. The shortstop, number one, Rafael Patel. Eric Kamak last year was in double A up in Binghamton, New York. And a reputation of being a real aggressive, come right after you kind of pitcher. Smart, real fine, kind of a street fighter kind of guy from Texas. And Rio has a real good makeup to be a a relief pitcher and a strike taken Rafael for Cal who's on deck what's he doing here Chipper Jones oh it's Joyner I'm sorry and a breaking ball for a strike 
Facially. Down there, I thought yeah. that was Chipper Jones. Facially, it looked like it from up here, didn't it? It's supposed to have gone home to Atlanta, and I was like, yeah. he fly back already? He had one of those real fast planes. Wally Joyner on deck. So, Millwood is finished for the night. 0 oh, 2 delivery, and a strikeout for K Mac. 0 oh, for 2 tonight with two walks. Or for Cal. One away, and Wally Joyner coming up. Wally Joyner. Interesting addition to the Atlanta Braves bench. They weren't sure what Galarraga was going to be able to do this year. Joyner was signed as an insurance policy at first base. 1 0 pitch is taken for a strike. Andres Galarraga. They haven't had to worry about him. So Joyner now up, coming off the bench as a pinch hitter. This year, six for 33, career-wise, a 216 average as a pinch hitter. Of course, when he was playing, he was generally playing. And playing pretty well, too. He was yeah. a good player. Good glove man. Good acquisition by the Atlanta Braves. You know, I think stamina was a was a question that John Sherholz had with Andrus Galarraga. How many games was he was he going to be able to play? How many innings was he going to be able to play? How many at bats was he going to be able to get? And Joyner gave them a big league backup. Joyner gets the walk. And that's the first walk by Kamak. So one on one away and Kelby O'Vara is coming up. One of the reasons you get people like Wally Joyner is to be a veteran story the other day that somebody in the clubhouse had put something negative up over Rocker's locker that was negative towards Rocker. Joyner took it down. So we don't do this on this team. And that was the end of that. And Wally Joyner can do that because he is a respected veteran. Chopper. Played by Zeal. Mora. And that's it. Take out slide just in case. Joiner at second base. Two down. Varis hits into the fielder's choice. Three six on the put out for two away. Todd Zeal, the high hop, had to get back into the baseline. Pretty good play right there. Make sure of one out. That's easily turned into a an air if you try to rush it and get to you could hit the runner right in the back but Todd knew they only had one chance really to get one out and that's a soft throw over the top of the runner. <laughs> Andrew Jones ball one. And Mike Piazza saying come on kid now it's just a pitch out. OK get it up about shoulder high. They must have had a real short catcher down in Tidewater. <laughs> <laughs> That is a pitch out out. It's like off Broadway and off off Broadway. Yeah. That was a pitch out out. That's a low pitch out out. Andrew Jones waiting. The concern over at first base. Gilvio Veras, the base stealer there. K Mac. This is inside, and a 2-0 count. Got to go here somewhere. Two outs. Two balls, no strikes. Can't really pitch out here. Obviously, Bobby Cox like to add one more run. Andrew Jones waiting through this effort at first base by Varis, and there he goes. Piazza's throw is not in time. So Kelby Alvarez, a relatively easy stolen base on that one. That'll be his 22nd. He's been thrown out nine times. Piazza's gotten 20 of 79 on the year. Well, he had no chance on that one. That's just stolen right off K Mac. And you know what Mike Piazza did? He came up, made a good throw to second base in case it was a bad slide or if he slid off the base at second base, at least he got a chance to get him there. Because he knew he wasn't going to get him. He knew it was a stolen base. You could see him out of the corner of his eye. And he's, he'll go chat with K Mac now to make sure he knows exactly what he's doing, who he wants to get, who's on deck. K Mac has been selected for the AAA All Star game. Now, whether he's there or not will depend on whether he's here. 
That's uh, going to be played at Frontier Field in Rochester on July 12. Triple A All Star game. He's five and one at Norfolk. He has he leads the club the Tides with seven saves. ERA of 1.56. KMAC. Three ball, one strike count. Andrew Jones looking for an RBI. Up high, he draws the walk. Two given up by KMAC. Two down. Well, you could read the reaction after he threw that ball. One of the things Mike Piazza said when he went out there, he said, "Listen, we got first base open. You got a three and one count on Jones. Do you want to go after him? Do you want to pitch around him and go after Brian Jordan?" It certainly didn't look like the reaction to the three and one pitch. It looked like he was upset that he threw a bad pitch. So maybe he wanted to go after him, just could not throw a strike. Brian Jordan gets the chance. Hitting third in the lineup with Chipper Jones home for family reasons tonight. He's got two on. He delivered a double and scored in the seventh inning, two for four game. And has hit the ball hard. Fly balls to right and center in the other two occasions. Now batting 296. 33 year old veteran out of Baltimore, Maryland, Brian Jordan, who came over from the Cardinals last year. Takes that pitch outside for a ball. Stretch that stance out. He was their best clutch hitter last year. 317 with runners in scoring position, number one on Atlanta. Takes it away, two and one. And hurt most of the year, too. Yep. Played, hurt. Of, played hurt, played hard. Well, my guess, I don't know him, but I, my guess would be he'd be a pretty good guy in the clubhouse. He looked like a real pro. pro. Take no guff from anybody. Tenth and RBIs last year in the league. Step off by KMAC. Varis at second, speedy base runner, same with Andrew Jones at first. And this time Jordan's going to step out at the plate. Atlanta leading the Mets 5 1 in the top of the eighth inning, trying to add to it. Two walks in the inning off K Mac just out of the bullpen. 2-1 to Jordan is up high and a three ball one strike count. And that's Galarraga. Jordan will look for one to hit right here. Hitters count three and one. And he got one. Left center field. Peyton racing back near the wall. Goodbye. A three run homer for Brian Jordan. And he got it on a hitter's count. And it is an 8 1 Atlanta lead. Home run number 13, RBIs 47, 48, 49. Well, you call it exactly right, Gary. The hitters count. A walk to Barris, walk to Jones, walk to Joyner, and the hitter in the driver's seat. Well, if you're going to get a fastball, you better get it way in there. If you're going to get it by somebody, and that count. Man, off the top of the fence. Oh, and off the back wall. I thought it hit the fence and bounced straight up. And by a fraction, Jay Payton missed that. But that's more the education of a young pitcher at the big league level. And there was that's a young pitcher, K Mac, who last year and this year has come right after hitters and thrown strikes. But he got very tentative against Joyner, Varis, and Jones. And then Brian Jordan, boom, the coup de gras. K Mac has worked four innings this year with the Mets and given up. That's the first home run off him. But Brian Jordan nailed it. Andres Galarraga, eight runs on ten hits now for the Braves, and they lead it eight to one. Galarraga been on base three times, single hit batter and a walk, and scored once. And he lifts one. That one's in the yard. Peyton. He's got it. That'll retire the side, but an important eighth inning. 
as Brian Jordan delivers the three run dinger is 13th of the year giving the Braves an 8 1 lead. Wally Joyner is going to stay in the ball game. Andor Scalaraga comes out. Joyner will play at first base. And tonight, Mike Hampton did not have all the stuff that he needed to win. And there were six walks, one of them intentional. Benny Agbayani trying to make a play on a bases loaded base hit. Two runs scored. Ball got away. Galarraga kept coming. Error charged to Piazza. Another one scored. Then it was Millwood. He's got a chance to win his sixth in this game. And then the Atlanta dance at second base deked everybody out. They still got the out. They went back. They smiled all the way through this one. Especially when Jordan delivered the three run home. This pitch is fouled back by Derek Bell and just off the edge of the screen and Lopez's glove. One strike count on Derek Bell. Bottom of the eighth inning and an 8 1 lead. Atlanta. And yes, the police force was present here again, just in case, as they will be all weekend long. It has been a very quiet night, especially for the Mets. Strike on the outside corner. Bell with a double in the fourth inning. Bullpen, quiet. Millwood leaving the ball game with a chance to win it. Langard on in relief. And the pitch is taken away. Elwood just kind of settled in as the ball game rolled along, and Mets could not get to him. Lengert's delivery is fouled off down the right field line. Like a lot of guys, Gary, guys that are power pitchers, sometimes it takes one or two innings for the fastball to really kick in where you can overpower somebody. And Millwood did not get his first strikeout until the fourth inning. And that was the third out of the inning. Then he went on to strike out for the next five. Tougher yeah. as it rolled on. Yeah, he got he was real strong in, uh, in the fourth, fifth, and sixth inning. Bell, another base hit. That is a hot bat. So Bell has picked up two hits, two for four in the ball game. Take a look at our cheap game summary here as the Braves lead it eight to one. Javi Lopez, a couple of walks and a couple of singles with three RBIs. Kevin Millwood, a great job he did tonight for the Braves pitching staff. Just six hits and one earned run, a couple of walks and six strikeouts. Mike Hampton struggled but kept his team in the ballgame. And Jordan, the big three run home run, top of the eighth inning. That's kind of put the icing on the cake for the Atlanta Braves. Mets now is seven hits in the game. As Millwood worked these seven innings, giving up six hits and only one run. He walked two and struck out six, trying to go three and zero in his career against the Mets with a win here tonight. Edgardo Alfonso, one for three. Pretty big cut on that one. I was thinking the same thing, Gary. It's not very often you see Edgardo Alfonso take his swing, which seems like it's out of control, where he's over swinging the bat. And it certainly looked like at that time. And then afterwards, it looked like he was maybe hurt his wrist again. Take a look at this. No balls in the strike. Fastball. Wow. You don't see him swing that hard very often. Hit this one to center. Andrew Jones back there. And no basket catch. Up 8 to 1. I thought it might see it. Up 8 to 1. And he, you know, uh, you know, he, you know, give him some grief about that. That little duo at second and short. That's about a half a basket catch. They're hollering at him. <laughs> Varus is at second base. Varus started hollering at him. Look at him. <laughs> Looking in. That Varus is giving him the what for. Get that glove up. What a life, huh? Hit, hit 320 in the big leagues, playing every day, playing center field, and running everything in sight. 22 years old. Just loving him. Just maybe nine in these Two coach. gold gloves already. I know. 22. I know. <laughs> so Piazza's seven game hit streak may have to be extended right here. It may not have another chance at it. He has gone 0 for 3. 
17 game streak it's brought his average up to that 359 mark. Guarantee you more concerned with the win than the streak. But he's going to get the streak. For Cal's throw goes into the dugout. It'll be a single and an error. And Piazza will make his way down to second, and Bell will go over to third. So the young shortstop up and fired that one way wide. His 14th error. Great range there. And then a rookie play right here. One of the things that you learn as you go along in the big leagues. Don't let one mistake cause another one. And the first part of that wasn't necessarily a mistake either. 18 game hit streak for Mike Piazza. Robin Ventura. One down, two in scoring position here in the eighth. Ventura's had an 0 for 2 and a walk 0 for 6 in the two games. So I got a miss. One thing Piazza may not get to do is continue that RBI streak. The major league record for RBIs in consecutive games is 17, held by Ray Grimes of the Cubs back in 1922. Along with the hit streak, Piazza's driven in at least one in his last 12. May not get another chance. That one foul back. No ball, two strike count. Obviously, that record we were talking about earlier, that record by Grimes, 17 games with an RBI consecutively is the major league record. So it has to be the National League record too, doesn't it? Gatz is going to need extra innings or a long eighth and ninth to get another chance. Two strike count on Ventura. Wengert misses inside. Don Wengert out of the bullpen. It was a late acquisition. He was signed by the Braves after the Astros released him in spring training and then made it up to the big club on May 29 when the former Met Greg McMichael went on the DL. Wengert's delivery is outside two and two to Ventura. Don Wengert's been around uh, Oakland San Diego Cubs Kansas City Astros and now Atlanta. And with Remlinger out of there as we said the bullpen of the Braves is short handed that's why the Millwood's performance and the offense has really mattered tonight. Towards second base, Kilby Overis makes the play to Wally Joyner, and that will do it. Ventura retired, and so are the Mets. Or two down, I'm sorry. That won't do it. Must be that pizza I ordered. Two down. Over to third base goes Piazza with Bell scoring, and it is an 8 2 game. I thought it was a third out too. I don't know why I thought that. The double play? Or the I don't know. Not the double play, the ball that Piazza hit. It's not for us to know. Two down, runner at third base. We have a little brain cramp? Well, we get a little help there. Oh, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. On the scoreboard. Wait, how many outs did it say? It said two. Right there. Want to correct that? Ah, twos. <laughs> uh, Todd Zeal. We like Sorry, those, Todd. We like those possessions. Didn't mean to take away your RBI, Robin Ventura. <laughs> and a strike taken. With that, Bell, of course, crosses the plate, and that will set a mark for the Mets as Derek Bell has scored in 10 consecutive games. That is a new mark, breaking the old mark of nine consecutive games in which a Met had scored a run. Bell's got 10. Todd Zeal 0 2 delivery and the pitch just missed inside Zeal delivering the base hit in the seventh inning and scored on the RBI single Matt Franco who came on as a pinch hitter delivered it now Zeal trying to get Piazza in from third base 1 2 delivery and will base hit in the left center field. Piazza scores and it's 8 3. It's 
So the air has proved costly in this inning helping to set up those two runs. And one of the things this does it gets the Mets closer to that you get in the middle of the lineup again in the ninth inning. There's Leo Mazzoni Bobby Cox. Is he going to go to the phone probably. Yeah you're down by five runs is all lost no because you got a chance to turn this line up over and get down to Alfonso and Piazza and Bell again. Well you may not tie the ball game up here but if you can turn this what Bobby Valentine is thinking if you can turn this line up over get one more base hit where you got a chance to get back to that top of that lineup again. Peyton had a single his last time up 11 game hit streak for him. Mets now have nine hits in the game. They're only being out hit 10 9, but trail 8 3. Sorry, Bayani on deck. Strike taken by Peyton. You're talking about those big outs, Gary. This, these last two outs, ever since Ventura was up, they've all been big outs because of that one fact of turning the lineup. If they don't get some that the bottom of the lineup out, they're going to turn in the ninth and have to face the middle of that oh. Met lineup again. If anybody's left in the dugout. If anybody's alive. After that foul ball. Stay alert, stay alive. See uh, El Fondo over there. Protecting after the fact. That went in and hit the back wall. One and two. Jay Payton, the third hottest hitter in June in the National League. Payton batting 402 this month. 1 2 delivery to him off the fist that's going to fall in base hit zeal stops at second. So Peyton two for four and the Mets keeping this inning alive have their 10th hit of the game. Well sometimes you hit line drive sometimes you pull your hands in and get as much on the bat as you possibly can that's exactly what Jay Payton did. And they creep closer and closer the Mets do to turn this lineup over and Bobby Cox is going to go to the bullpen. Gary Leitenberg has been ready in the bullpen and Bobby Cox is going to go there. So Don Wenger who comes on in relief in the eighth cannot get that third out. And it's 8 3 now. Don Wangard unable to get it done. Two thirds of an inning, giving up three hits, two runs so far, one costly error in the inning. And with two away, he'll sit and watch Kerry Leitenberg. Leitenberg's record 2 and 1. This is his 28th appearance for the Atlanta Braves. He has six saves, 25 innings pitch, 22 hits, and just eight walks. Gary Leitenberg will face Benny Agbayani. Runners at first and second and two down. Leitenberg, who had 30 saves in 98, had a torn elbow ligament. And last year missed it all. Now trying to make the comeback. Leitenberg had the save last night. And they did not want to go to Leitenberg tonight, but with Mike Remlinger unable to pitch and the bullpen short, he's back. Benny Agbayani missed outside. He has struck out twice, grounded out, one for seven in this series. You think Leo Mazzoni's rocking right now on that bench over yeah, there? A little worried. Oh, he stopped. Uh, maybe he's upset. Duo pitch. Right field. Down the line. Over. Jordan. Foul ball. There you go. One thing I couldn't understand. He got a short bullpen. Why in the world they take Millwood out? Pitch count. Number of pitches again. Big strong guy. Strapper from North Carolina. That's just the way it is, I guess. Harry Mulholland. Gary Leitenberg. 
Two ball, one strike count, two down. Agbayani waiting. Fastball. Agbayani has faced him only once, 0 for 1. Two ball, two strike count. Look at Mark Johnson is in the on deck circle. He's way away from the on deck batter's box. Way away. Maybe a few pitchers will chase him out of there. 2 2 delivery. Check swing. Runners will stay. Lopez blocked it in front of him. Did not go around. Crew chief Bruce Fremen. He's getting some heat from Bobby Cox, too, on the 2 2 pitch. How far does he have to go? And you know what? Bruce could hear him, too, because he was answering him. I don't think anybody asked for the call. Home plate umpire did. Did he? Yeah. Three, two, two on. Runners go. Agbayani fouls it off. Maybe these series aren't tense, these matchups between these two teams. Three two they go again inside ball four. They're loaded. Mark Johnson sent up by Bobby Valentine as the pinch hitter for K Mac. Well, the Mets jiggled their roster for this chance. Zeal, single, Peyton, single, Agbayani, walk. They brought Mark Johnson up from the minors. To have a little more left handed power on the bench to throw up against the Atlanta Braves in this series. Here he is. Outside ball one. Mark Johnson, of course, has had very few at bats. Only 14 as a pinch hitter with the Mets, though. Two for six with one pinch hit home run. Outside corner strike from Lightenberg, one and one. Had his first home run as a Met pinch hit homer against Florida, sixth pinch hit home run of his career. Up and down a couple of times from Norfolk. One one pitch. Good pitch by Lightenberg, one and two. Sinker on the outside part of the plate. Every pitch that he's thrown has been out there. One for a ball and two for strikes. Where do you think he's going to go now? Right where he makes his money. One and two. Tried to get him to chase one. Two ball, two strike count. Every pitch. <laughs> Almost in a trance. 2 2 2 away, bases full. 8 3 Braves lead. Johnson stays away. 3 and 2. Two count, two down. Bases loaded. Lightenberg to Johnson. He walked in a run. And that will get Lopez and Leo Mazzoni to the mound. Fourteen pitches since Lightenberg came into the ball game. Nine of them have been for balls. I don't know 
know if that's a pleasant conversation or what. Well, I think the message has been sent. Terry Mulholland, the left-hander, is ready if needed. Obviously, they do not want to bring him in here with Mora, I Bell, wonder, Alfonso. I wonder where Rocker was against Johnson. 1 0 pitch. Rocker worked the inning last night and has been out there in the bullpen sitting, but we've not seen him up throwing. Bell on deck. Two all count. Two and one on Mora. Had his single in the sixth inning. I look at the first pitch that has not been that sinker on the right side of the plate as you're looking into home plate. Look like a little nickel slider. Gary Leitenberg, bases loaded, 2 1 delivery. 3 and 1 to Mora. Mike Hampton gave up a bases loaded walk in the first inning to Javi Lopez. Leitenberg has given up a bases loaded walk to Johnson. May give up another one. Three and two. Sacks full of Mets. Peyton Agbayani and Johnson. Harrison Ventura watching. Three two. And he walked another one. It's eight to five. Done. That's Lenny Harris. He's going to walk him. He walked him. The bases are still loaded, and a left hander coming on to face Derek Bell. Gary Leitenberg faced three hitters, and he walked them all. Two of them with the bases loaded. Terry Mulholland, the veteran left-hander. Former starter. Now works out of the bullpen. Ewing's going to run at second base for Johnson. Bases loaded, two down. Mets have scored four runs here in the eighth inning. Two of them on bases loaded walks. Derek Bell, one of the hottest bats in the lineup, two hits tonight. First pitch from Mulholland is foul back. I just missed it, too. Derek Bell usually tries to hit the ball to right center field. It looked like you just pull off a tad on the fastball. You check the runners around the bases. Yep, still loaded. He has torn up Terry Mulholland in his career. A 417 batting average and two home runs. Yet Bobby Cox, knowing that, could not leave the right hander Leitenberg in when he walked all three he faced and does, has not had Rocker up in the bullpen in this game, the right hander. Not available. And that pitch is inside. Two ball, one strike count. Got ahead with the first pitch, strike one, and the last two have not been close. Two ball, one strike count on Bell. Unbelievable. Three and one. There have been three consecutive walks. Bell, who started this inning with a single, up for the second time. And he walks! Eight to six! <laughs> Tony 
Talk about a collapse by your bullpen. Edgardo Alfonso, bases loaded. It is an 8 6 Atlanta lead. And a strike taken on the inside corner as Mulholland trying to find a way to get a third out that will not come for the Braves as the Mets have battled for five runs in the eighth inning. And a two strike count. Atlanta staff has now thrown 50 pitches in this inning. 50. And that probably is the best one right there of the of the lot. 50 pitches in one inning. Alfonso four for 19 with one home run lifetime off Millwood. Off Mulholland brother. Inside. After there were two down, Zeal singled, Peyton singled, Agbayani, Johnson. Mora and Bell have all drawn walks. Jammed him. Still a ball and two strikes. If you, if you were pitching, wouldn't you want to like go through the order so you get to Alfonso and Piazza? Isn't that the way you'd go about it? Perfect. <laughs> if you're wearing those color uniforms. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Last pitch pretty good to Alfonso. He was fooled by it. Looked like a breaking ball the inside part of the plate. One ball, two strikes, two down. The third. That's what pays hit. Picking it up. No play at the plate. Tie game. A two RBI single. Elgato Alfonso. Lockhart could not get it at third. And with two down, the runners were flying. Take a look at the Met bench. Yeah, they can't believe it either. Seven runs in the inning for the Mets. The Braves try to put it out of reach with three runs in the eighth and one in the seventh. They went up eight to one. And they have graciously given it right back here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Oh my. You think the Atlanta Braves still have some work to do about putting their team together? Jam house at Shea. What a show. 8-8. Eight, eight. Piazza, two down. Mets have scored six runs. The two away. Piazza rips it. Will it stay fair? Goodbye, home run! Mike Piazza! A three-run homer! 11 to 
His 22nd home run of the year. RBIs 66, 67, 68. Got him. A 10 run eighth inning, an 11 to 8 Mets lead. Piazza has extended his hit streak twice in this inning. Barris. Ventura retired. New York Mets baseball is brought to you by your local Lexus dealer who invites you to test drive the new IS 300 today. Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. The men and women of General Motors whose commitment to quality brings you outstanding cars and trucks. Palm, access email, sports, updates, news, and more anytime, anywhere. Closed captioning brought to you in part by 1-800-MATTRESS and mattress.com where the last S is for savings. What a game. Ten runs in the eighth inning. And an 11 8 ball game. Amando Benitez on. And Lopez, first ball hitting, first base, Todd Zeal, foul territory. Hey, look at Armando Benitez coming on after that phenomenal 10 run inning for the Mets. Fortieth game for Armando Benitez, his fortieth game. And looking for his 19th save. The 10 runs in the eighth inning is the most in an inning this year. The Mets had nine. Against Pittsburgh. Ground ball by Lockhart. Zeal can't get it. Alfonso! Not in time. What a play by Edgardo Alfonso to Benitez. The ball was there. The only thing it could have been to Benitez did not hit the bag. His foot maybe did not hit the bag. Bruce Fremming right on top of the play. What a play by Alfonso. Look at this. And that's exactly what Bruce is talking about. He's right on it. Looked like the just on the inside part of the but what a play by Alfonso. There's a play that doesn't show up in the record books right there. How good all around player that he is. They will credit a base hit on that to Lockhart at first base. Strike on the outside corner Trinidad Hubbard. In that eighth inning, three of the runs were scored on consecutive bases loaded walks to Johnson, Mora, Bell. I don't to go a long time for me to go back and try and think of a ball game where I've seen that. And then Piazza. You see into the game, watch the reaction. One one delivery foul back by Hubbard one and two. The Mets got ten runs on six hits in the inning. And the celebration led by Todd Pratt on the home run by Piazza. Well Holland gave it up. One two delivery. Two down. Take a look at the two strike swing by Hubbard. Huge swing. One out to go. One of the all time great comebacks. 
not only for the Mets but any team when you get 10 runs in the eighth inning to build an 11 8 lead you put on a show for Cal the rookie shortstop when the Mets have trailed after seven they have won three games three and twenty three they can win their fourth but Cal takes it down low and a 2 0 count. The Atlanta Braves team not smiling anymore. Mulholland charged with just one run, six hits over seven, and then it all caved in. Two thirds of an inning. Don Wengert, four runs. Leitenberg, three runs, no hits, three walks. And then Mulholland wrapped it up, four off him. Piazza's home run. Taking all the way, a strike, two and one. Two one delivery for Cal takes it down low. So Piazza continued his hit streak to 18 games. Has driven in at least one run in the last 13. He'll continue that streak too. Outside, not over yet. Benita surrenders a walk, bringing the potential tying run to the plate. Wally Joyner. Joyner came on as a pinch hitter, stayed on at first base. He's batting ninth. Two on, two down, ninth inning. Joyner, center field. Jay Payton. What a comeback! The Mets win it 11 to 8. Put it in perspective. This is the second biggest comeback in New York Mets history. In 1972, they came back from an eight-nothing deficit against Pittsburgh. This is the second biggest comeback. The Mets have evened up this four-game series with a win over the Atlanta Braves before a full house, 11 to eight. Thank you.